Today, Donald Trump attended the wake for a fallen officer, and he slammed Democrat crime policy where they're releasing criminals. This guy who killed this officer had been arrested 21 times. So, of course, uh, many people have stepped up to help the family. And uh, there's a really, really great story about how uh, Trump, I, I, I think this is the story. I, I don't want to get it wrong. So maybe I'll just save it for the segment. But basically got the uh, uh, helped to get the the family's uh, like home paid for and stuff like that. I wanna, I'll, I'll keep it vague in the intro. We'll, we'll read the story. Um, in the meantime, however, Joe Biden is attending a party with Lizzo. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we're all very excited. It's very expensive. They say it's the most successful fundraiser ever. Obama's going to be there. Clinton's going to be there. You got Mindy Kaling. Nah, tell, well, it, come on. If you were the president, where would you rather be? Fallen officer, party with Lizzo. Yeah, we know we know Biden's priorities. Uh, I wonder what your priorities are. We'll talk about that. Plus, the other big news coming out of New York, while Donald Trump is complaining about the crime from Democrats, women are getting punched in the face. A lot. So much so that the NB, that NBC News has actually run this as a big story and uh, talk shows are actually bringing it up that what's happening in New York where people are going around guys and just punching women in the face. Well, everyone's mad at me because I said I thought it was funny. But uh, I got to be honest. They arrested Daniel Penny. They voted to release criminals. They banned guns. What did you think was going to happen? Why wouldn't I laugh? They're, they're, they, they're living the way they want to live. I don't know what the problem is. Why would you be mad at me for being like, well, you got what you asked for. Congratulations. It's everything you've ever wanted. We'll talk about that plus a bunch of other stories. Before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com. Pick up your cast brew coffee. We got a bunch of great flavors and different blends. Stand to your grounds is our medium roast. I know everybody loves Appalachian Nights. So uh, if you haven't actually bought any cast brew, you know, you got to buy Appalachian Nights because there's something going on with it where everyone loves it so much we sell out and we've had to dramatically increase our orders. In fact, we went to our, we, we told our distributor to just take, take it upon themselves to refill orders without even asking because they sell out so quickly. So that stuff's good. I recommend you buy it. Um, but also, please buy some of our other blends as well. We've got pumpkin spice. We've got uh, a light roast, Rise with Roberto Jr. And uh, it's actually quite sad because the two mascots for this company, Roberto Jr. and Mr. Bocas, have both died. But they're animals, so, uh, you know, say la vie, it is what it is. Uh, don't forget to also head over to uh, TimCast.com, click join us, so you can become a member, and as a member, you will get access to our Discord server, where you'll hang out, you can hang out with like-minded individuals, network, build community, that's the most important thing you can do. For those that don't know, don't know what a Discord server is, it's like a chat room, download an app, and you can hang out with people, it's really fun. You'll also get access to our uncensored members-only show, coming up tonight at 10 p.m., you don't want to miss it. Joining us tonight, uh, oh, I'm sorry, smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and everything else is Mark Loblinner. Thanks for having me, man. Good to be back. Absolutely. Who are you? What do you do? So I'm Mark Loblinner. I'm the chief marketing officer, tigerfitness.com, CEO of MTS Nutrition, also a founding partner of Ambrosia, the number one plant protein at Sprouts and the Vitamin Shop. And um, I own a youth performance facility in Franklin, Tennessee called Legacy at Carbon. So um, I'm here. I'm excited to be back. And uh, man, so much crazy stuff going on. Yeah. You look like you work out. A little bit. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm also an IFBB pro bodybuilder. I'm not yeah. very good. I'm not very good, but I still get up there. I put on the little thong and I do my thing. So, you know, what I love is that there, there's a bunch of leftists. So I, I recently have been talking quite a bit. I got a personal trainer. And so you look great, by the way, I, I've added lifting to my routine. Yeah. And so it's, it's been and, and tracking my macros and I feel better than ever. It's fantastic. And uh, so I had a couple of workouts in the past week where it's like 1500 calories in, in a three hour session, just super intense VO2 max, all that good stuff. And so I'm feeling great. And we've challenged our audience to get fit by November. Like if there's anything we can do to take responsibility for ourselves and our bodies is just to get in shape and stuff like that. But there's a left, the left is saying it's a grift, the fitness grift there. Yes. Heaven forbid we tell our viewers to be responsible and healthy and live long lives. Well, when I was growing up, it always seemed like the liberals were the ones who were in shape, right? It just seemed like the Jane Fonda and all that. But suddenly training has become white supremacy. <laughs> Weight training is white supremacy. When, if you go to any gym, the most jacked guys, they're usually black. So nobody gave them the memo. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's far right now. But thanks for hanging out. It should be fun. We've got Hannah Claire hanging out. Hey, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlaw. I'm a writer for SCNR.com. I'm really looking forward to tonight's conversation. Uh, I'm so happy because Alad's here tonight. What's up, Hannah Claire? My name's Alad Eliyahu. I'm a field reporter here at TimCast. Hey, what's up, Serge? Hey, Ro. Glad you made it. Uh, thanks for being here, man. Uh, let's just get to it, Tim, whenever. Well, here's the big news. Donald Trump uh, slams murder of NYPD cop Jonathan Diller by serial criminal 
as he attends slain officers wake. We have to toughen it up. These things can't happen. Uh, I, I, I look, this, there's the obvious and tremendous respect that I have for Donald Trump. And I know I can already hear everyone getting ready to type in those comments where they say that I've been very critical of the police. And I think that criticism still stands. And I can be critical of police while still respecting the duty of an officer who was killed because of Democrats failed policies, understanding that uh, y'all understand, I actually like the institution of police. I think we have a problem today. But outside of my personal views, I want to I want to just stress the importance of who Donald Trump is, who is actually taking time out of his day to go and meet with officers to speak at this event and help the family. In the meantime, Joe Biden is at a fundraiser hanging out with Obama and Lizzo, where it's uh, the highest end ticket is five hundred thousand dollars. And it is plainly obvious the priorities of this country. I think it's fair to have criticisms of government agents, of the police, especially the Capitol Police, while still recognizing that there is respect for civic duty and dis, uh, disdain for it or disregard for it. And that's what's currently happening. So uh, who are you voting for? <laughs> well, obviously, I'm voting for Donald Trump. Yeah, there's really no choice in this matter. But I think what we're seeing here is the division of the parties. And this is the greatest example I think we've seen to date of what's happening is that back in the day, you looked the Democrats were the party of the people, the party of the union, the union workers. Now you have Biden with Lizzo and Obama at a star studded gala. <laughs> and yet Trump is out there with the people, slain officers, their families. He's doing what needs to be done. So we're seeing the ultimate description right now of the divide that we're having where democ the democrat party is no longer the party of the people it's no longer the party of the working class it's the party of the haves i agree i heard the story so please someone fact check me check, fact check me if this is wrong because i just saw it on twitter where they said that trump immediately contacted the wife spoke with her about it and then right after he got off the phone tunnels to towers called her and said your home is paid for is that, is that, did you hear that? I yes. saw that on Twitter too, but I didn't, I yeah, haven't verified I don't know. it yet. I, I, so, so I heard that. I don't know Tunnels, that's true. Okay. CBS news is reporting that Tunnels Towers will pay off um, his mortgage on their Long Island home, but I don't house. know that it's specifically because of Trump. It's not clear to me. Well, right, 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 right. But so the, the, the story as I saw it was that Trump called up, said, you know, how are you? Hope everything's good. Asked what they needed. And then got off the phone and then immediately Tunnels to Towers contacted her and said, your home's taken care of. So it could be right, independent uh, of that. But at the very least, many people are giving Trump credit for contacting the family and giving his condolences. You know, the, the, the issue here and the reason why this is so obviously in the spotlight is that we have a, a, a criminal immigration, criminal uh, a alien invasion. You've got uh, uh, people storming the border, fighting National Guard. Crime is, is getting insane in New York while Democrats are releasing criminals. While it appears that everything's burning down, I mean, prices are going up and then they're denying it. Bill Maher, at the very least, said Joe Biden's going to lose because hot dogs are more expensive. The most smarmy way of describing that. Yeah, hot dogs. Regular working class people like to buy hot dogs for their family. Mm -hmm. That's this, that's like basic food stuff when you go to the supermarket and they and, and it smugly says, oh, it's more expensive. Y yeah, right. People can't afford to eat. And I'm watching all of this. We're hearing these stories of people getting pushed in front of trains. We're hearing these stories of women getting punched in the face in New York and Joe Biden's at a party. Well, it shows you who's acting presidential. That's the big criticism of Trump all the time, that he doesn't act like a president, that he doesn't, you know, speak the right way or do the right thing or he's too brash or whatever. And in this case, he's with the family of an officer who lost his life because of a failed federal policy or a leftist policy. And then you have two former Democratic presidents, Bill Clinton was there and Obama and the current incumbent Democratic president raising money with pop stars who I also don't think really necessarily represent our values of the country. Me I mean, who if if one is the president, which which form of a president would you want? The one that's trying to fundraise or the one that's actually with people who need him? Or, or I'll put it this way. The left will say, oh, Trump's only doing this to fundraise. My, or, or, or to make money or for political points or whatever. I just my response would be like, OK, then let's say you have two presidents who are trying to fundraise Trump by honoring a fallen officer and spending time at the wake and speaking about it or partying. Like even if this is all just politics for Trump, I would rather a president pretend to care than a president just literally not care at all. Whatever happened to optics? Right. right. So optics are everything in politics. It's everything in everything. It's everything in business. Right. You want to have the proper optics. If anything, Biden should have just faked it because, you know, he doesn't care.
Mm. Biden doesn't know where he is right now. He can't care. He can't. It's he doesn't like know. There. He, he, it's, there's nothing in there. The wheel is spinning, but the hamster is dead. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so Biden doesn't know where he is, but you think that someone there would be like, hey, Trump is one upping us. But here's the problem is that these people with Trump derangement syndrome hate him so much. This guy could literally cure cancer. He could literally do everything right, which he's doing. And they will still say he's more evil than Biden, who is out there partying with whatever Lizzo is. I believe she's classified as a blimp. And he's out there partying with her instead of honoring I, this, this, uh, this fallen soldier, I'd like to say. I think one of the biggest and most unfortunate things about the recent um, crimes that we've seen in New York City between this cop getting shot and the person getting shoved onto the subway and killed is that the people who are committing these crimes are repeat offenders. I'm reading from the story here that um, there were two people in the car, one of the people who shot back at this officer. Both um, have dozens of prior arrests. The person who shoved the lady onto the subway also had many prior arrests. I'm also willing to bet the person going around punching women in the face um, near Washington It's not Square one Park, guy. I, yeah. I bet it's a handful of people who are repeat offenders. There's a serious one percenter issue with committing crimes in the city and the city needs to be willing to involuntarily institutionalize a lot of these people. But there just doesn't seem to be the political will to do that. I, I, I can shorten that for you and just say arrest. Yeah, I mean, but also like there's some people who it needs to go beyond arrest. The people who can't take care of themselves, who are a threat to themselves and others. There are a ton of these people running around the area where we're seeing women get decked around. Um, and again, it's just really unfortunate because these are self-inflicted wounds. These aren't things that are beyond, you know, the government's capability to help prevent. So, yeah, well, I, I, it says here the guy was arrested 21 times. So here's the thing now. We, we need to be critical of police officers, right? We need to be critical of everybody in a society. Imagine if you're an NYPD officer, and I'm friends with a lot of NYPD officers. Imagine if you're arresting these guys just to have these Soros-funded DAs send them on the streets. You go to work every day, and keep in mind, these guys, I know this is not the argument you guys want to hear, especially Tim, but they have families, they have mortgages, they have pensions they've already put 20 years in, they have another 10 to hit their 30. So they're arresting them. They're letting them back out. Imagine how demoralizing it is as a police officer. Because a lot of these guys, they want to arrest criminals. A lot of cops get into policing to do the right thing. I'm very it's, it's, sympathetic. It's, 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 it's a negative pressure system, and I don't accept it. I don't either. What, 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 what is happening now, and my criticism for the system of policing, primarily in, say, New York or Chicago or L.A., is that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll target New York specifically. They arrest a guy who's threatening to kill people and he gets released right away. Yes. They know if I try and stop this guy, nothing will happen. You also have stories where, uh, for instance, Luke Rutkowski, there was a guy on the train. Someone started stabbing people and the cops said, we're not getting involved because we have no legal obligation. The courts ruled the cops don't have an obligation to actually intervene. So what ends up happening is this. You have a scenario where cops either say, I can't stop the guy because maybe there's someone on a murderous rampage and they're ill-equipped. They say, even if I try to stop the guy, he'll get released. Mm -hmm. And then you have a system where Daniel Penny cooperates and they say, ah, now there's a guy I can arrest because he won't fight back. The, this negative pressure system means innocent people are more likely to be imprisoned. Honest people are more likely to be imprisoned and criminals are more likely to get away. This is what we're seeing in New York. Not, not a single NYPD officer should be accepting anything to do with transporting, detaining, or, or guarding Penny. Daniel Penny, the moment that whole thing happened with Jordan Neely in the train threatening to kill people, the cops should have been like, I'm not touching that man. When, there's, when the supervisor says, arrest him, he's being charged, I ain't touching him. But what do you get? You get cops who would smile on their faces, be like, this one's easy. So, so it's not about the individual cop. It's about the fact that if Daniel Penny wasn't arrested and every single officer said no, and the police union issued a statement saying, we will not be involved. You're going to have to call state police to deal with this because we will not. Or And state police did the same thing. Penny would say, what are you going to do? And then maybe the criminals might be like, uh-oh, we better stop trying to kill people. Instead, I watched a video of a guy in New York stabbing someone, I believe. Uh, uh, like, it's crazy because there's, there's too many of these videos. They're just all over the place. Yeah. And you got people hiding and trying to run from the trains. And I'm like, man, this is nuts. And what happens? These people don't get caught or arrested. The cops say, well, even if we arrest them, they're going to be let go. Then why did you arrest Penny? Why do I, why, why is there a video of Daniel Penny in cuffs being led into a building? 
I 100% agree that there is accountability with the cops. 100%. However, it's top down. It starts from the voters. The voters are electing these people that are putting through these policies. They are voting for this. So the cops are like, this is what these people want. These New Yorkers are getting what they voted for. Who am I to sure, say? Sure, Mark, there's something you said that I used to believe is true, but I don't think is anymore. And it's when you said you think people um, join the NYPD or different cop forces to try to fight crime. I used to believe that was true. But nowadays, just with how, seeing how the NYTB, NYPD performs, it doesn't feel like that anymore. It feels like people are in it for a job. Many of them seem incompetent. There's also a feeling that they're there for the wrong reasons and aren't really trying to affect change. I'm not a proponent of hopping turnstiles, but when we see a lot of cops in the subways, that's what it feels like they're there for because I still ride the sub, I, I live in Brooklyn and I ride the subway often. And the, the people who the cops seem to stop are the people who are hopping turnstiles. Again, that's wrong and I'm not a proponent of that, but I also see a ton of homeless people actually committing crimes on the subway or just people who probably should be involuntarily institutionalized riding around the subway that, you know, they should probably deal, be dealing with instead. I understand there's a current culture of defunding the police and demoralizing the police and they're dealing with a very tough time but half of the nypd does seem incompetent or doesn't want to do their job or are demoralized and i don't fully blame them i'm sympathetic towards them but they aren't living up to what i think the expectations and i'm not going to throw in the whole there's good cops and bad cops thing that's a stupid argument what i'm saying is that you get what you allow to happen mm. you get what you vote for and that's what we're getting here you don't see that stuff happen in remember try that in a small town you just don't see it happen you're not going to see the franklin tennis see police department do stuff like that they're going to yeah. uphold what they need to uphold like during covid we can say covid now right during during the times of covid i remember watching the news and i remember seeing these cops arresting moms at playgrounds arresting people alone on the beach and i'm in franklin and i'm like whoa there's a cop at the park there's a mom in the swing and the cop starts walking out towards them and i'm like oh i'm gonna film this man i'm going viral cop went and pushed the kid on the swing Okay, there's a difference. Yeah, but in uh, in South Jersey, which is a suburban yeah. area, they pulled in outside cops to go shut down Attila's gym, and the cops went and did it. In yeah. Minnesota, a woman opened her cafe, so they threatened her with arrest. She fled to Iowa, and the sheriff's department actually tracked her down and arrested her. Yeah. In Texas, a woman opened her salon, and she got arrested too. So, you know, look, it is it, it is not the individual officers, and I totally can respect them. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're going to get stories of hero cops because they're heroes. You're going to hear stories of good cops who give people reasonable warnings and actually police their communities in reasonable and uh, uh, thoughtful ways. And then you're going to get stories of the institution in general and the pressure that exists where it is more difficult to go after a deranged lunatic with a gun than it is Daniel Penny. And that's why we see people like Penny in prison and these criminals being let go. Now, that's mainly New York, and we, I can accept that. But even in Texas, you have Daniel Perry, a guy was an Uber driver and these far leftists during during the George Floyd riots come up to his car. One guy's got a rifle at low ready. And when he walks into the car with his rifle at low ready, the guy shoots him in defense. Now, why would he shoot? What's his reasonable expectation? In Provo, Utah, far leftists went up to a car for no reason and shot the guy. We had uh, uh, you had the guy, Aaron Danielson, in, in I believe, was it Portland? Far leftists walked up to him. Michael Reinhold put two bolts in his chest. This guy goes to prison. You have the Proud Boys at a, at a Gavin McInnes event in New York. Antifa shows up harassing the, 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 the patrons of this event. And when they come out, Antifa starts a fight with them. They engage. They choose to run at Antifa and engage in this fight. And when the police show up afterwards, the Proud Boys with smiles on their faces said, thank you, officer. Here's my information. And you know what the cop said? Awesome. Now you're going to prison for four years and Antifa gets to go home. Antifa ran off and the cop said, we don't care. We don't know who they are. You're going to prison and locked up the Proud Boys. You can argue that police are good. You can argue we got to back the blue, but you at least need to understand the system as it's set up is pressurized. Yes. So if you are honest and you are cooperating, you will go to jail. And if you are a criminal who lies, cheats and steals, you will not. That's exactly what's happening. And again, it's it's systemic. It's you can't we can't just blame the cops. We need to blame the cops. But we also need to look at the system around them that is causing them to make these decisions. And again, like there's a reason why I'm not a cop. I could never do that. I would have quit. But the problem is yep. they already chased off all the good cops. Yep. They chased them off during 2020. The people who would not comply with unconstitutional orders. And now they're DEI communists. <laughs> Pretty that, much. I yeah. mean, this is something people need to consider. Yeah. 
How many officers in New York who resigned because of what they the abuse they were getting were replaced by diversity and inclusivity, uh, woke uh, communist types? And now not, at some point, there's going to be a communist wearing a communist hat with a New York with an NYPD badge. And there's going to be some conservatives going to be like, thank you, officer, back the blue. And they're going to they're going to throw them in a gulag. So re- recognize you may like the institution of policing, but we need to pay attention to what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, let, let's let's talk a bit about Joe Biden, though. So uh, we have this from Axios. Biden's fundraiser with Obama and Clinton highlights Trump's cash crunch. Oh, no, it's Trump's fault. Well, my friends, as Joe Biden is hanging out with Obama and Lizzo and others, Trump was at uh, uh, the wake for a fallen officer who was killed due to uh, this career criminal who reportedly, I believe, was released 21 times. And now here we are. Congratulations, Joe Biden. He's raised a bunch of money. They say the Biden campaign is expecting to raise more than $25 million in one night which they say will make it the most successful political fundraiser in American history. Wow. Biden's campaign in the DNC ended last month with more than twice as much cash on hand as Trump and the RNC, 44.8 million. Axios' Zachary Basu and Aaron Doherty report. The sold out fundraiser will only add to the growing cash dispens- disparity between the two parties' presumptive nominees. Yes, because they arrested Trump. Yeah. So they arrest Trump and then force him to spend his donations on legal fees. While they go out and fundraise and tie them up in court, I'm going to say it. Y'all know what I'm going to say. These people are evil. There's no real way around what's going on right now. We've seen um, Kevin O'Leary go on about what's going on with Trump. Basically, they can find something, get you on, and the judge can just rule. So we're, we're in a situation where if they don't like you, if they don't want you to run for something, they will find a way to get you. They will find a way. There is no way around it. Even Donald Trump is not immune to what's happening right now. They can do it to him. And they're right. He says this. They can do it to him. They can do it to any of us. And they do. Thing is, we're hearing about it because it happened to Trump. How many business people have they done this to? That's what I want to know. Who have we not heard about? It's pretty clear and obvious that if Trump weren't running for president, that not all of these cases uh, would be going against him. It's also interesting, though, because I don't know how cash strapped Donald Trump is with dropping his uh, the IPO for Truth (laughs) Social. But I think the bigger story here is that. Um, the Democrat Party is kind of coalescing and unifying. There's, again, a, f- a few former presidents here campaigning with Obama. The Democrat Party is more or less united, and you can't really say the same about the Republican Party. Um, I See, just I, think that's I, an important story. I think it's interesting because it's always been that way. I think the, the Republicans tend to be much more fractured. To me, what's what's interesting about the story is you have Biden campaign bragging, we have $25 million. And for any sort of non-political, maybe leans left, middle American person who is like, what would I do with $25 million? What would I do with $2,000 right now? Like how much of a difference could this make in my life? To have a headline like this where they're like, ha ha, we have more money than Trump does. It's also like saying to the people like, look, we just are swimming in cash. If we want money, we get it. And we don't, that's not true for you. Good luck paying your bills. Good luck with tax season. Like mm. it feels very out of t- like tone deaf to me to have these these flashy headlines about money, knowing that so many Americans, even Americans that you're hoping will vote for you, are struggling financially right now. Cash is extremely important in campaigns, but I think if anything, this is is an election where it might be its least relevant. Uh, given both these guys are at 100 percent name ID, um, both are former presidents. Mm-hmm. Um, but the amount of earned media that both are getting is astronomical. So I'm I mean. Money doesn't hurt, but there was an interesting point that was made on uh, the five earlier. Colbert is going to facilitate the discussion among the presidents. I used C- to could like you, Colbert. Could you imagine? <laughs> I forgot who said. I think it might have been like uh, Gutfeld said, or or one of the guys in the five, Jesse. If they did anything like that, they'd be they'd be. Out. I think it was Jesse uh, Jesse Waters. They'd be out in ten minutes. If if they said we're going to host a fundraiser for a Republican, Fox would be like, "Are you nuts?" But this 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 is the game they play. Stephen Colbert goes on TV screaming and lying about Donald Trump and then goes and hosts fundraisers for the mm-hmm. Democrats. As we all know, the only person who should be mediating a, mediating a debate between Biden and Trump is Theo Vaughn. That would be the <laughs> most hilarious thing I've ever seen in my whole life. And also, I think more people would feel like they can relate to it than <clears throat> Stephen Colbert, who's been, what, a, a mainstream media darling for as long as he can remember. You know, you know what, though? I mean, the night is always darkest before the dawn, they say. And I wonder if this is but a fleeting moment and victory is inevitable. It's going to be hard. I mean, is Pressler still the guy for the ballot harvesting initiative? I think they, I think he is, right? Because I, I heard he's in, he's out. At the end of the day, it's not 
your grandfather's election. Well, he's still ballot harvesting, it seems like, regardless of yeah, he just with does the RNC. Thing, I have yeah. seen reports that he's not going to be formally be with the RNC, but I don't know. And, and whatever, he's he's kind of the guy, but looking at what's going on right now, it's not even about the popular vote. It's who can get people to go out and vote. Are people mad enough to vote against Trump? Because no one's voting for Biden. No, people don't like Biden. I don't even see Democrats. They're like, well, I guess he's not Trump. But the thing is, I think who Trump picks as a running mate makes somewhat of a difference, but not as much. I think that you're seeing this demographic shift where am I seeing the black vote is going in favor more, more so maybe, I mean, maybe they say it every cycle, like, oh, wow, the black vote's shifting and then it doesn't. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, I mean, there are, again, you look at optics, look at what, did you see that, that kid who was going to the community center to play baseball, had his little baseball bat in his bag, was going, and the entire thing was taken over by illegal immigrants. Mm, wow. So, I mean, those optics in the black community, because look, I grew up in those communities. You take away the community center, you take away a kid's life, take away his opportunity, his chances. You take away sports, that kid's probably not going to make it. Mm. I think the the lack of consensus in the Republican Party, the lack of unity is, again, going to be a huge issue for them, because even on bo- ballot harvesting, I feel like Republicans can't get this on the same page yeah. on that. On mail in voting, the Republicans can't get on the same page. I'll tell you, Joe Biden and Obama don't have any, aren't aren't debating whether or not to do bo- ballot harvesting it's, or mail in voting. But it's yeah. because there's a cult and there's a not cult and the not yeah. cult, which is is coalescing in the Republican Party, is arguing with itself. Right. The, 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 the not cult is not a unified group. Never. It, it's not been. You've got disaffected liberals who don't agree with, you know, you've got libertarian leaning individuals. And now they're all voting Republican because Democrats are a cult. Yeah. Obama's only 62. We're not we're never seeing the end of him. Oh, that wow. guy's gonna like, live he's to going to be 200. doing these fundraisers with the future. He's got Wh- whatever more Democrat years to is go. running in three cycles down. Obama will be fundraising for him. So I still and think then, he's the and, most popular uh, Democrat. Uh, and then Democrat Obama. Party. And then Obama, in yeah, in in twenty or thirty years with Neuralink, and they oh, tr- transport his brain into a robot body. Then Ro- Obama is well. Th- is there's always Michelle. There's always Michelle. You know, there's I'm not. I'm, Michelle. I, I'm, I'm not so sure she gets involved. I don't think she. I think the history is her saying she really doesn't want to be involved, but. I still think it's such an interesting contrast. We don't have Bush, um, you know, you know well, trying Bu- to Bush, fundraise here. The with entire Donald Republican Trump. Party, the 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 establishment, they are all publicly against Trump. You have senators saying they won't vote for Trump. Didn't Romney say he's not going to vote for Trump? Like, I feel like the establishment senator, has be, Trump has taken over these. I'll, I'll tell you why Michelle Obama will not run because Michelle Obama doesn't like being called a man. <laughs> I think if there's one thing you can say to insult a woman, especially an aging woman, is I'm pretty sure you're a man. And so... Consi- women don't like that. Yeah, women don't like that. Chicks so don't like that. No. Michelle Obama, who <laughs> is a woman and has children, but yeah. a lot of people don't believe it, this was a very powerful and clever political tactic to use against a, a prominent female Democrat. Is w- Whether it's uh, people legitimately believe Michelle Obama is a man or or not, Michelle Ob- like. I do not believe Michelle Obama has the strength of will to withstand people screaming you're a man in her face and posting these videos and photoshopping her face. And that is a brutal thing to endure. And it's effective. Yeah. Well, Uh, she would only run if she felt either really drawn to power or really drawn to service of the country. And she has influence. People care what she says. She has money. Like, she doesn't need to be the president to live a very luxurious elite life. And I don't think she necessarily feels called to serve the people. So the, your wife is a man has always been a very interesting political attack to me. And thinking, I think Candace Owens recently said that Macron's wife, Bridget um, Macron is a man. Is a said. man. So yeah, I mean, I, it's a very po- so potent political attack. So if of you want to, yeah, if you want to politically attack somebody, just be like, Hey, that person's wife said that, that's a man. Well, I think when you look at the, uh, say like Instagram data on young, young women and you see the high rates of depression, it, 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 it seems based on the current research we have that women are, are much more susceptible to the negative impacts of, of trolling yeah. than men are. So you have to imagine like, you know, what has Obama heard about himself? He's heard racist things. He's heard, he's heard that he's, he's a, a murderer. He's had podcasters go on these Im- impassioned and fierce rants, bang the table about how he murdered 16 year old Abdurrahman Alalaki and should be uh, tried for war crimes. You know, and how uh, he he's, he 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 signed the indefinite detention provision, and he drone striked weddings. Just podcasters ranting all day and night about how bad he doesn't care. No, he pressed the button. He knew what he was doing when he did it. 
I don't think Michelle Obama can look at the screen with someone showing a zoom in on her crotch shape and forward and reverse while she's dancing. And they're like, that's that's a penis. And I think she looks at that and she's like, I do not want to do this. I cannot do this. <laughs> that's right. just terrible. And again, what does she get out of it? Like, unless you feel uh. called to serve the people or you're chasing power, why would you run for president? And right. she doesn't feel called to serve and she already has power and influence. Barack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like there's un, no un, benefit unless, for her other than to be ridiculed by the un, press to save the country after, from Donald but the, Trump. I just said yes. she doesn't feel called to serve. <laughs> it's not that. It's not called to serve. It's if they stand to lose control because they have no one left after. They, look, Biden doesn't even count. Okay, no. Biden is like a, a, a nostalgia for for older voters. You know, he, he's he. That's that's it. It's like remember Obama years. That's Biden, and that's all you get. After him, what are you going to do? Hey, here's Buttigieg. They're going to be like, nah. Michelle doesn't have to run because the Obamas are already in power. The people who staff Joe Biden's administration are already the Obiden, uh, the Biden, the Obama, Obama <laughs> you know, administration you got people. It right. So yeah, you, you got it right the first time. Right. <laughs> why, why even bother running? You know, just staff uh, the, with the, all the, Obama people. Bo so. Both parties don't really have someone waiting in the wing. Like there's not a number two. Would you say there's a number two for either party? Republicans, yes. I, th I think there are, yeah. Republicans. DeSantis and... De De DeSantis is, is a coin toss now because of the way he ran his campaign. He, but I think he learned and I think he went up against Trump. But... And that's true. That's, and that's true. That's that's like being a defensive lineman and Tom Brady is standing there right in front of you. Like, you can't, you can't out troll Trump. Like, he doesn't care. The Republicans are in deep shit after Donald Trump retires from politics. There will not be... I don't think the Republicans are going to win another presidential See, election. I no, for a long time. Nuts. 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 No, because nuts. Donald Trump was a once-in-a-generation political yeah, figure. But, that, but, but, but to say that they'll not win for a while, that's for, ridiculous. Uh, I think... No, yeah, that's what I think. And we'll see. But I think Donald Trump will win this upcoming who election. Do, but do, then further down the line, who, I think the, the Republicans won't be able to coalesce their coalition. I think the Republican coalition is fracturing deeply and more so than the Democrats. Democrats are. So I, I think the Democrat uh, Israel. Agree. I hope I'm wrong. Israel. I, I, I hope mean, I'm wrong. The, the Israel the fragmentation yeah. with the Democratic Party is substantially worse than anything the Republicans are dealing with. I couldn't imagine another figure who could have that charisma and can inspire cult-like attitudes from the public. What, 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 Anything what, similar to Trump. What does that have to do with what, I, what I'm talking about? Well, but but if you because look, that's what I think it requires well, to look, inspire look at, and win. Look at Minnesota. In, Republican Biden's actually going and spending some time in Minnesota now because the Palestine-Israel thing is driving that even that base imagine you have a stronghold like minnesota and dear and dearborn yeah they, I mean, they, they they voted they voted uh what did they vote uh n n nobody or whatever in they, the, they in literally the, voted uh, for nobody nobody won <laughs> nobody won so so if you look at what's going on with israel and palestine like that is the issue because jews man my people they love them some democrats they can literally democrats can literally go out and say hey we don't like the jews just like cool I'll vote for Obama. That's fine. No big deal. Sounds right. Because Jews are traditionally Democrat. And then you have the other side, the Palestinian backers, which but is that's, basically- That's changing. And this is the this is the point I'm making. Yeah, exactly. The, I, I, yeah, I don't think that's gonna, gonna, gonna fly much longer. The fragmentation is already there. Michael Rapoport. He like he he went to Israel recently. Yeah. And he's, he's like, he's posting a video. He's like, I don't see no apartheid or whatever, which I thought was- you're fairly ignorant, but that's fine. I'm not going to argue Israel. But the point is, this is a guy who hates Trump, who's now like, I was wrong about Trump. And he might but wait, there's, oh, there's, might similar, there's similar fracturing within parts of the Republican Party over Israel as well, though. Like, I don't yeah, think that's unique much, to the Democrats. Much smaller. Look, I think, uh, I think it's just as vocal. The anti-Israel parts of the Republican but, Party but, are but, right. The, the, the anti-Israel parts of the Republican Party are like the why are we funding Israel part. part. And so you have a wide range of people who are like, you know, like us, for instance, my my attitude, and I think many, many people who are here say for me like one or two is we should not be involved in foreign spending for yep. for these countries. Anyway. Freedom caucus types. Right. Yeah. And so that will align with the critical of Zionist, you know, pro-Palestine side, because it's like, hey, we don't need to have a moral argument on this one. How about we just start with no more foreign funding? That works for you, works for me. Okay, now go argue your morals somewhere else. Right, right. I think you have to look down the bench is the problem. Like with Republicans, you know, should Trump be elected in November, they have four more years to set up a press set up, uh, 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 the, sorry, I can't talk at all, uh, a, prede a predecessor to Trump, right? So, no, that's not right. Whatever. They have someone to inherit Trump's throne at Proceed the end on. of 2028. Like that's what they need. And there are a lot of young, strong, ideologically 
interesting Republicans right now. And I think that the problem with the fracture in the left, because you're right, there is fracturing on both sides. I just think it's more devastating on the left because they are splitting from like moderate to really progressive and they only bring out their super progressive people. Those are the people who get social media attention. Those are people who are making the sound bites. And I don't think that would resonate with the voters. So who do they send to the next, you know, not 2024, but 2028? And I think there are stronger young Republicans coming down the pike. Let's name who is next in line for the Democratic Party at the highest level. What do you think? Um, I guess Kamala Harris. Oh, I, I'm not going to. I mean, she, totally she couldn't get. Obvious. She couldn't get one delegate. Um, who is Gavin Newsom? I guess would also. Gavin be a would be who I go with, just because he fits the bill. But I think but that he's, he's but controversial, he's, and he would. And, 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 and he's C minus. He's not an A lister. I think the AOC. The, why I think the Republicans oh, are going to have trouble down the line is no, 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 no. In four to eight years, AOC, oh, AOC, AO, oh, AOC so. has the has the charisma and X factor for the for the modern progressive left. The issue, however, with AOC is, while I think she's the most viable contender for a leadership position moving forward, and she knows it, and that's why she's playing ball with Pelosi, the problem is her her adherence to the progressive left will isolate all of the Jewish Democrats and shove them into the Republican mm-hmm. Party. I she won't even be able to win in a statewide Senate race, I don't think, AOC. Yeah, I think so. she's in Congress for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I, I do not underestimate AOC. Mm-hmm. Right now, you might say that, but look at how she games the media. Look at how she games social media. She knows how to rally her, her, her cult very well. She has that. Gavin Newsom does not. Newsom has no base. He has corporate press narrative. AOC built up her own lunatic base. And so I say four to eight years, she is going to refine that and she will, she will build power. But the fracturing right now over Israel-Palestine means she's going to go. She's, I, I believe she's already gone on TV now after those activists attacked her and said that uh, Israel's committing genocide. And that's it. Yeah. That, that may have ended her chance at securing a position in the Democratic Party because I'll just put it this way. The only reason the Democrats want to ban TikTok now is because they can't control the anti-Israel propaganda that's on it and they desperately want to get rid of it. Yeah. AOC is on the other side of that criticizing Israel. She's going to lose all the donor support, big donor support. Well, who's given to the De- who's given to the Democrat Party? Bunch of rich Jewish donors. I mean, if you look them up, there's a lot of steams over there, man. Like, let's be real. Uh, my point with uh, Trump was that he is such a unique political figure inspiring so much support out of the base that I don't think there's going to be anybody like him, any talent like that in the near future for the Republicans I, 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 oh, yeah, that'll be right. able to compete with the DNC machine, Trump is which could just in throw somebody in and could beat a not special talent out but, of the but Republicans. That, but then again, the Republicans have won with boring bastards before. Mm-hmm. I think the country as a whole, though, with the Democrat machine is going Nikki, less and less in that favor. It's, it, if if it's not Trump, Nikki Haley, if it's not, if it's not Trump, hmm. And the Republican Party what just gets if, if it's fractured and the unipart. Okay, so if Trump's not there, this may be their strategy. Trump gets four more years after he's out. No matter who it is, it will be too divided, giving them an opportunity to inject a Nikki Haley. Yeah, That's, I think the Republican Party would reject that. Like the grassroots yeah, would too. reject that, and she'd totally lose. Which is again why I think the Democrats. Yes, are but it's a split true. race. You have Vivek Ramaswamy, you have Ron DeSantis, you'll have a handful of other up and coming young stars and there'll be a primary and it'll be 17 percent here and 13 there. And Nikki Haley will get 19 percent and then end up winning. I just really think the next four years are make or break like J.D. Vance, Josh Hawley, Matt Gates. Yep. Like there are a lot of young, talented guys in. And that's just I mean, there are also young governors who are doing interesting things. Republicans have just a, a, a broader depth of, of of options than I think uh, Democrats do. I mean, we're talking about people who are in Congress. Congress or the Senate, you know, look at the Democratic governors that might potentially launch a bit. Like none of them look potentially impressive Gretchen in my opinion, Whitmer. which I mean, I just don't, I don't think she would win the votes. And I, do, I don't mean to speak badly. I just I think that she is not what the the middle tier of American voters, the moderate lean one way or the other voters are looking for. And so, again, for Republicans, four years to build and to get your ground and to, to really cultivate your your persona nationally is great, whereas Democrats kind of have to start from ground zero because you know, are you going to elect like Jay Inslee from Washington? And Josh I thought, Shapiro I th- may be in Pennsylvania. No, Dem- I, all of the Democrats are against, you know, white males. So like they're sort of they, they have a they have more obstacles to overcome when setting up their next their next can- next candidate than Republicans do, in my opinion. Maybe I'm just so down on Republicans after seeing all these guys resign. It seems like there's well, no and commitment it's good to, to be their critical service. Of them, you know, 
Yep, uh, just, I agree. Uh, I agree. And the Democrats correct. again, they seem like they're more on the same page. They're more in this all together. Obama's visiting with Biden and uh, Clinton as well. well Everybody's I mean, shaking but, hands. Oh, Everybody, that, you know, they're all on the same that's page. That's the ideologies time. in general, though. If you look at it, socialism, they're going to work together. Whereas if you're more of an independent, you're libertarian thinkers, we're going to have our own thoughts. We could have debates. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think we can rally behind a candidate who, I hate to say the cliche, is just not as bad as the other guy. <laughs> well, there, there, there the Republicans, Republicans have way too many on the back bench. Yes. There's it's, just so many, there's so much opportunity there. Yeah. Well, and with the Republicans that have, because I think it's interesting that, you know, so many Republicans have exited Congress of late and some of them like midterm, right? Uh, Mike, uh, Mike, is it Mike Gallagher or Mike Rosendale? Out there's of, just a couple. Uh, I'll pull day. it in a second. I think they have a one seat majority now the in the House. It's, it's a little bit higher than that. It's like wow. three. It's not big. But the thing is, the Republicans that are leaving seem to be all on one side. Like of the three Republicans that voted against Mayorkas' impeachment, two of them have now announced that they are leaving kind of effective immediately, which is interesting, right? Like it's not happening across everywhere. It's certain class of people or like a lot of people who are aligned with McCarthy have announced that they're re retiring or they're leaving. McCarthy yeah. obviously Because there are fractures like, in the Republican Party, which that, that means the that Democrats don't there have There are fractures, bad. but they're weeding themselves out of government, right? I, I, like I, that I, means- And losing I, their I, majority. I, I, I gotta stop you right there. The fracturing in the Democratic Party is worse. Dude, I, the, I hope so, but Michael, I don't think so. How how in the world you got Michael Rapaport who makes who's like for six years is just going on Twitter and being like Donald Trump's got a big stick gun, <laughs> and now he's like Trump's not so bad. I'm he like, wears wow. three star of Davids. Like that's pretty <laughs> awesome. Look, the, he doesn't just he wears three of them, bro. He's out Jewing you. He's out Jewing me. I don't need to wear three star of Davids. I don't need to wear one. I think you already know where I'm at. But. <laughs> I, I forgot. I disavow point. this whole conversation. <laughs> I just want everyone just to know. To that, but my point is, uh, the Democratic Party has split in half. <laughs> the younger portion is is very critical of Israel, and to to the extent many of them don't don't believe that Israel is a legitimate nation. They believe it's a colonizer nation created by the Balfour Declaration and shouldn't exist. You do have elements of that on the right, but it's substantially smaller on the right than the left. So yeah. there are way too many squad members in Congress, but it's only like a handful anyway, though. So again, this is like, I think, relatively small and doesn't have a lot but of look, representation. Look, but Joe Biden had to go to Michigan and Minnesota because these people are critical of his position. And he's got protesters in New York right now. And I think these are a loud minority and Joe Biden's being politically not savvy by making these moves. Exactly. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, OK, I'll, I'll tell you this, maybe. But I believe the younger generation, gen, younger millennials and Gen Z Democrats are anti-Israel. I, I, I think I, I, I've not met uh, all of these Democrats. I've not met a single young Democrat ever who's pro-Israel. Have you? Uh, I think. There are some, and I think they still have some representation in the Senate and the House. For example, John Fetterman is outspokenly pro He's, Israel in House. How old is John Fetterman? 50. Probably one not, of the youngest senators. Probably 50? one of the young, youngest that's, senators. That's another that's problem. Pretty, probably yeah, one yeah. of the youngest <laughs> senators. We just opened up okay. a whole can of worms. Though. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. But to be fair, he's not representing 20-year-olds. Uh, he's representing 35 to 45-year-olds or older. Well, well. And, and. I, mad respect to Fetterman for standing so, his ground so on this what, one. What, real quick, so I could clarify, what do we consider right. pro-Israel? Do we consider my stance, which is it should not be something we deal with? Let them do their Insufficiently own thing? Insufficiently pro-Israel, in my opinion, if that's what pro-Israel is. Well, exactly, well, no, 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 no. but are we consider it pro-Palestine and then everybody else? Or is it, which, how are we classifying the Israel-Palestine divide? So there's the moral argument and then the financial argument. Mm -hmm. And uh, the moral argument is impossible to answer. Yes. I fall more into the financial argument of, how about this? I can't, answer, I can't answer these moral questions. I don't think the United States should be involved in this stuff. I think we should focus on our borders. The way I said it before is, I got an idea. Let's give Israel every dollar they need and ask for. In fact, we'll double it. The United States should double whatever amount of money they want to give to double. Yes. So Israel, they want 15 billion. We're going to give them 30, baby. I hereby, Tim Pool say we give Israel $30 billion after we secure our border, after we deal with the homeless crisis, after we deport the illegal We need immigrants, a draft after, so we can secure our border. I like that. And so my yeah. point is- I like that. 
Bef- once the United States has solved all of its problems, every single one, and we're all flying around in hover chairs with perfect health care and we're immortal, then we can start giving our money away to other people. Mark, that to answer stand. your question, I think it's clear you're an anti-Israel person or politician. I think an easy way to do it is if you hold Israel to a double standard that you don't hold any other country. Th- that's not me. I, I, I hold I'm, I'm America first. I, I am. I'm my mother served in the IDF. If you don't know that, like I am Jewish, I'm Jewish as hell, but I'm an American. This is where I live till we secure our borders, till we figure out how to get out of our $35 trillion in debt. Exactly. Then we should not be sending one dime to the Ukraine. Shouldn't be sending one dime to Israel. We should be taking care of ourselves. Israel has health care for their citizens. How are we giving money to a country that has something we don't have? <laughs> it's pretty shitty health care in Israel, but, yeah, but it's still, still yeah, something. Yeah. You know what? I'll take something over anything. If I'm hungry, I'm not going to be like, oh, I can't have bread. I'm low carb. No, give me the (laughs) bread. Okay. It's at the end of the day, why are we giving to countries who are operating in a surplus? So, so what it comes down to is the, 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 the flattest entry point in the pro or anti-Israel is supporting funding for Israel or supporting Israel's actions in general. Okay. Typically, the people who agree with what Israel is doing <clears throat> tend to agree with the, the U.S. as an ally providing support, at least in some way. My attitude is, you know, we're, we're certainly we're certainly at it. I, I can't begin to pretend I know enough about Israel-Palestine to give you a moral answer. I can give you a really yeah. simple one, which the anti-Israel people do like. I agree with you. We, we solve all our problems here in this country before we give money to anybody else. I don't care if it's Sudan, Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Vietnam, North Korea, South Korea, whatever. Yep. Why are we giving money to anybody else when when our country is dealing with high cost of food, high cost of gas, Wait, impossible but here, rent? The money isn't the issue with securing our border. It's the political will to do so. We could secure our border tomorrow if it's we want. Not, it's, I don't I'm think not, it's a lack of money. I'm not just talking about one single issue. I'm saying this yeah. country has a litany of problems that we are not dealing with. And we're instead investing money in foreign conflict and for some nebulous uh, uh, mili- military reason we don't know about. The American people have a right to know. Yeah. I certainly understand the issue of clearance and all that, but so long as they can't explain the, the, the true necessity of it, I say, then no. Then no. we got too many homeless people. We've got a border crisis and, no, as you mentioned, no political willpower. We've got health care issues. People going bankrupt because they break their legs. Yes. Or get, can't, no, I'm, I'm not okay with any of that. And you want to make an argument for why you think you're, you're, the country that you support deserves our money. The first thing I'm going to say is I will give that country I will, 20 billion. How much do you want to give? Sudan, you want to give Somalia. You know, you've got uh, Ilhan Omar's people very much wanting to help out Somalia. I got $10 billion for Somalia. Right here, right here in the treasury. Okay, we're going to send to them as soon as we solve every problem in this country. Once we are with perfect health care, immortal, no homeless people, abundant food, then we can all sit down and say, you know, now we got some extra stuff. Should we give it out? Why I say I think you could tell somebody's anti-Israel is if they have the double standard is that I think people tend to focus the most on our military support for Israel when we support militarily dozens of nations, even more than we ever have for Israel. People say we shouldn't fight any wars for Israel, and I totally agree with that. I don't think we should ever fight a conflict for Israel, and we never have. But we have fought conflicts in Vietnam. We fought conflicts in Korea. How'd that Vietnam thing end? So this is... This, this is what I refer to as Israel derangement, which is different from just being generally anti-Israel. Yeah. No, and, because and, nobody, people say, hey, we shouldn't fight any wars for Israel. And I wholeheartedly agree. But I mean, I'm sure there were people saying we shouldn't fight wars for Vietnam and we shouldn't. It just feels like people are more. And we send a ton of money to South Korea. We have tens of thousands of troops on the DMZ right now um, in South and North Korea, just there as cannon fodder to help prevent a conflict from breaking out. We give them a ton of money. We give Taiwan a lot of money, obviously. I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. All of which if, I support giving, uh, by the way. So not- I, I do think it's funny when like the Israel derangement people refer to us as Zionists because we're not sufficiently anti-Israel. Yeah. Wanting to cut all funding to them and other countries is not anti-Israel because it still uh, uh, pur- purports Israel's continued existence through our neutrality or something like that. And there are prominent individuals who refer to me as a Zionist, despite the fact I know very little, don't care and don't want to give them any money. I, that's, that's derangement. And so there are people here at Timcast, uh, like one of my best friends, Cassandra McDonald, who is very critical of Israel all the time on Twitter. And we're all friends, despite, you know, like it lies on the white other side than than both of us. We we get along. We argue these things. Cassandra has a reasonable criticism, highlights things she's she's reasonably concerned about, 
takes issue with the military actions. And I'm like, well, I, I, she's got a point. I, I understand why she's mad. <sighs> but then there are people who are like, you're a Zionist with a secret yarmulke under your beanie being funded by Mossad. I knew it. To, but but it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy because these people who go on Twitter and there's a, there's a, a, the derangement stretches from someone posted an image of Luke Rudkowski with a Star of David on it. And I'm like, he does have a big nose. And, 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 right. and yes, he's Polish, but he's, I, I can assure you, Luke Rudkowski's not Jewish. No, no, Luke's and, not Jewish. And has, and, and has never supported anything pertaining to like the Israel conflict. He's, he's pro-American uh, anarchist. And this is derangement. The people who are like, they, they created an image. They do this all the time with a bunch of different faces claiming they're all Jewish. And I'm like, Luke Rutkowski is not just that's derangement. How do I Tim, get on Israel, those lists? Israel derangement syndrome sounds like a polite euphemism for anti-Semitism. That's I, what I, I hear I when don't, I hear I you don't, say it. I don't like conflating critical criticism of Israel with with anti-Semitism. Yeah, but it's derangement. It's beyond criticism. It's, it's just it, what I hear when I hear you say. There, there, there's definitely when it comes to Israel derangement, a serious overlap with outright hating Jews for sure. There like, actually is putting a Star of David on Luke Rutkowski's picture is like, yo, you are nuts. I think there's very responsible ways to be anti-Israel, and one of the amazing talents at Timcast News, Cassandra Fairbanks, I think does a great job of it. But I think many people don't do it in a responsible way, and I think there's some. Um, benefit online to that. I unfortunately think like anti-Semitism is popular on some parts of the internet. Oh, it absolutely is. Um, well, and well, then there's also digital manipulation. Like, for example, I saw a Hitler speech translated on Twitter the other day with like 20 K some odd likes and a couple of things there. I don't think it's that popular. I think there's actual Russian or I don't know if it's Russian specifically, but I think there's foreign influences manipulating Twitter obviously, but it's I, odd to see that stuff. I do want to, um, I do want to jump to the next story, but I do want to just yeah. say one more thing. You know, often when I see anyone with any kind of derangement, I have to wonder if they're actually supporting what they claim to hate. <laughs> because if you go on Twitter and claim to uh, be critical of Zionism in Israel, but then you act away the way these people do, it makes the average person really want to defend Israel. Yes. Like the, the, the people going online and posting offensive images and accusing everyone of being Jews and saying all this weird stuff, it pushes people towards Israel instead of away from it. So I'm like... I just go ahead and assume that all these people who are like on Twitter, on X saying these crazy things, I'm like, they must really just love, they're false flagging, you know what I mean? <laughs> so there's no yarmulke under well, the beanie? Well, you no, can go, you go, real quick, you Damn. go into like the whole blocking traffic and protest things, you block my way to work, man. I'm, I'm sending money myself to Israel. I do think this is a vocal minority <laughs> I mean, though, like a very vocal minority. Well, let's, let, let, let's jump to this next story, back to the crime issue. We have this from NBC oh, News. Oh, Multiple women online say they were punched while walking around New York City. Multiple videos, which were uploaded to TikTok, have picked up traction in the last week, with women online sharing their safety concerns in comments and reply videos. My response to this was, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and um, I got ratioed. Yeah, good job. And there, there was, you know, um, let me just, let me just, I'll just, I'll just pull up the tweet because like, I, saying oh, it God. doesn't do it justice. So let me just, let me, let me pull up my tweet so you can get a general understanding of my position on this, and then I will, I will explain it. Were there any articles written about you, like far right podcaster uh, celebrates? It's this. Oh, Here, here's the image. Uh, uh, at Tara, at, at Tara Bull says, "Do you think this is funny?" And it's one of the videos, and I responded with this. <laughs> no. <he> yes. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's actually quite simple. Oh, Let's no. see uh, which tweet, which tweets do I have? Oh, so we have the we have the uh, videos pulled up of various instances where women have been getting punched. And, uh, you know, Ian Miles Chong posting this this collection of women saying they're getting punched. And uh, let's see, we have uh, another another video. What else do we have pulled up? Uh, 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 we have, the, I'll, I'll jump to the Women's Caucus in a second, but let me tell you why I think it's funny. Daniel Penny was on a train and there were women on that train and a man was threatening to kill them. Daniel Penny intervened. He's now facing jail for doing so. Yeah. They vote to ban guns. <laughs> they vote to release criminals. They vote to arrest people like Daniel Penny. And what happens? Well, you release the criminals. You can't defend yourself. So the criminals know you can't defend yourself. So they go around punching you. I think it's hilarious. Why? You're eating crow. You reap what you sow. Voting has consequences. And I got to stop all the conservatives because a bunch of conservatives are like, not cool, Tim. It's really bad that you shouldn't laugh at these women. And I'm like, no, 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 no. How dare you? You authoritarians. These women were teary eyed saying, I just want to get punched in the face. And they they banged that voting card. They slammed their finger on that touch screen and said, I vote to get criminals on the street so they can punch me in the face. And I said, so brave, 
So brave of you to vote for what you want. And now they are living their dreams. You can't come to me and say that it's not funny these women are getting attacked when I'm like, they overwhelmingly voted for this to happen. And now it's happening. If someone voted, if, if we were, okay, how about this? We all, we're all sitting here. We're like, let's vote on what we should get for dinner. And then Hannah Claire says, I want sushi. And we go, okay, everybody votes. It's mixed. But then sushi ends up winning. Sushi arrives. Hannah Claire starts crying because she doesn't want sushi. Am I, what am I going to do? I'm going to laugh. Does she want a ham sandwich instead? I'm gonna, like, you, oh, you, you voted for it. I'm sorry. Now you're mad you got it? It's like a little kid being like, I want pizza. And the pizza comes and the kid starts crying. Like, I don't want pizza anymore. Well, here's what you get. Mm -hmm. I'm conflicted. I really am. Because at one end, I, I have an 18-year-old daughter and a, and a wife. So if someone is attacking a woman, my initial reaction is to, wait, I gotta, I, I've, I've been given things I'm not allowed to say, is to be, <laughs> is to be, com <clears throat> is to be combative. Is well, 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 well I'll, put, so, I'll put it this way. You, you, uh, you are legally allowed to yeah. defend yourself and others in this country, up into including lethal force, if you feel there's a threat to your life or there's serious bodily harm. But, but we've just seen with the New York subway with Daniel Penny, that that doesn't apply. They will still come yeah, after you. It will still right. cost you money. Okay. So on the other hand, if I see a woman being punched, I'm thinking to myself, if I get involved in this. How much is it going to cost me to defend myself in court? I had a friend of mine who actually defended himself. He was an MMA guy, knocked a guy out. $50,000 later, they found him not guilty. He doesn't get that money back. Hey. No, no, finish, finish. So, so the, the question is, when, when do we stop looking out for society and start looking out for ourselves? It's have, conflicting. Have you seen the, the film <clears throat> The Incredibles? Yes. Yeah, you guys have seen this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mr. Incredible, superhero, <clears throat> sees a man about to commit suicide. And when the guy jumps off the building and is falling to his death, Mr. Incredible leaps into the air, catches him in midair, slamming through a window, rolling on the ground and saving his life. And that man sued him saying, I didn't want to be saved. I didn't ask to be saved. And now I'm injured because of you. And that was basically the premise of the film where this ended superheroes. Yeah. So if there's a woman in New York and a guy is threatening her and you're there, it's not just that you, sh you shouldn't just think to yourself, what will it cost? Sir, there's a bunch of guys on Twitter being like, no, I'd intervene and defend her. And then what happens when she screams at you, hits you with the person, say, how dare you? I voted for this and I want this. How dare you? You're the criminal. I, what, what, don't I hear, The challenge is not just that you will get arrested for saving a woman. It's that you're assuming that woman is actually upset about what's going on. I think that's the challenge here, which is that, you know, whether or not they thought through the consequences that they had, if you are supporting, you know, um, policies that allow criminals to be released or, uh, you know, things that don't sufficiently deal with people who are violent offenders, uh, you are ultimately voting against your own safety. And it's hard for me to watch these videos because obviously, like, I'm a woman walking down the street. It's stressful to think, like, you have to be more aware, especially if you're by yourself, of like what's going on and things you have to do. You know, it's a reason that I would choose not to live in New York because there are certain laws that restrict ways that you can defend yourself. Uh, but at the same time, when I look at these videos and see like how upset they are and that they're getting hurt, like I am sad for them and I wish we lived in a place where that didn't happen. On the other hand, like they are actively participating in the creation of this circumstance. And so, so you have to say like, all of these women who got punched, are you now willing to move out of New York? Are you willing to change how you vote? Like. This is sad that it happened to you, but what do, what have you learned from this experience? And it's not enough to just be like, can you believe this happened to me? Like, you have to actively be part of the solution now because people, you have been part of the problem. I, I had people tweet at me like, wouldn't you be upset if your mom or girlfriend got attacked? And I said, I live in West Virginia. We have constitutional carry. Yeah. I am not that concerned. Mm. And, I, I, and I, the I, laws I, I are on your honest. side. And There's the, a standard the laws, ground and, and all that good oh, stuff. I, I, I mean, it's why I got out of New York. It's why I got out of New Jersey. And it's why we're we, our new studio is launching in like a week. It's already done. We've been using it and uh, we've been building out the tech and stuff. And it looks amazing. And it's in it's in the heart of West Virginia. Well, it's not the heart of West, but, but it's in the eastern panhandle. It's, it's dead in West Virginia. And uh, we've got water on the property. We've got emergency backup power and guns. We have so many. I can't count them. <laughs> there was I can't remember who said this. Someone on Twitter. If you it was it Austin Peterson, maybe if you can count the number of guns you have, you don't have enough. <laughs> and so my, my attitude is, obviously, I would be upset if a loved one of mine was attacked by a deranged man. 
I also recognize the importance of them having the ability to defend themselves, to be in shape to the best of their abilities, to know how to defend themselves and to be armed. But you in New York City voted to disarm yourselves. I ain't going to I look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to laugh. You're living the way you want to live. What am I supposed to do about that? Why are people upset? They're living the way they chose to live. Destiny had a really great point. <clears throat> he said, honestly, I felt the exact same way about conservatives dying of COVID. Wow. And I'm like, well, I'm not talking about women dying here, but I'll be fair. His sentiment, his view is you are choosing to live a way I think will lead to your harm. And then you are reaping the repercussions of, of your own bad choices. Yeah. I, I, what do you want me to do about it? Um, are we going to are we going to go invade New York and change the laws? No. So then what? And we're going to sit back mind our own business where we try to secure our families and our communities. And then we laugh at the people who vote to destroy themselves. There's really no good answer about this. There's no good way to look at this because as men, we should be protecting, you know, I've actually gone almost 180 on this subject. When you're looking at, for example, men, biological men and women's sports. When you look at the repercussions for women standing up against it, these are girls who train five hours a day, probably a menorrhea. They can't have periods anymore. They train so hard. Mm. They've given their entire life from six years old to let's play soccer, say soccer. And then they're in high school and they say, if you don't play in this game, if you forfeit this game, you're done. You're not going to get a college scholarship. Your dreams are over. So I'm in a situation now, and this is in the last week where I almost think that as men, we need to stand up and say, this is not working. What is happening is not working because women, look, women can make great CEOs, great everything. They're great. They're awesome. I'm not going to be on that sexist, misogynistic rant. I'm not doing that. But when it comes to protecting society, when it comes to protecting women and children, it's up to the men. So what do we do? I think Daniel Penny was trying to defend a woman. So but what do you, what was do you, it worth it? Would he do it again? Yeah. That's the question. So, so In it, it is a good question. Not. And what do you do? Well, it is up to men to protect women. It is both a biological reality. It's a moral reality for many of us who hold those morals. Uh, but however, what if there's a bunch of women standing in a field and there is a boulder rolling down a mountain and it's about to crush all of them and you run over and go, we got to get these women out of here. And they scream at you, throw rocks at you and tell you to screw off. At a certain point, it's like, hmm, I don't know I can save them. New York City, you've got women vote uh, in, in the United States, 70% of millennial women vote Democrat. They are voting in people who are burning this country to the ground. I do not blame all women for this. I'm saying it's a generality. In New York, where it's a Democrat stronghold, it's actually a significantly higher percentage. So if they are telling you outright, your worldview is not welcome here, your guns, your defense, your masculinity is toxic, get away from me. Do you force yourself and your worldview on that woman for her own safety? Are we assuming that all of these victims share that? Because there are people who don't vote like that. I, I, do we I, have I, to I, go I, with I, that I, assumption? I understand that. But the issue then is, do you go into a foreign country, for instance, like Canada? Should we should we go into Canada and, and, and give them free speech? Certainly many people in Canada, probably the most, actually do like free speech, but the government won't give it to them. Yeah. Many of them had their guns taken away by decree. Should the United States invade Canada to restore the rights because not everyone agrees with having their guns taken away? The answer is no. Should should we go into New York and impose the, the, the will, uh, our will on these people because they choose to vote the way they do? I think the answer is no. I do think, however, if Trump gets elected, he should suspend federal funding to them because they're a corrupt communist state. But that's yeah. different from telling them they should have to carry guns and lock up their, their criminals. Hey, you want to live this way and let your criminals roam free? You choose to live there. Ain't nobody making you stay. My fear is it's a social contagion that if it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. And you see that in blue areas of red states like Nashville, for example, like Memphis. So my fear is that if men don't societally take a role in protecting women and children, that it's a slippery slope. I feel like the issue is in the past 130, 140 years, actually, actually just about 180 years, women have stated in force and often with physical force to men, we don't want your protection. So back the F off. The question then becomes, if a, if a, if, if, if a woman is about to, uh, you know, walk into, uh, a, there's a shootout happening in New York and a woman's walking into it. Should the guy grab her by force and rip her away while she protests 
get your hands off me? Or should they be like, you are free to do what you want? The question here is interesting because I've been in circumstances like this where we had, uh, I, I went to Egypt, for instance, and right before I had gone there, a young female Dutch reporter was gang raped in Tahrir Square because her company said, you know, we need a reporter to go to Egypt. He said, I want to do it. And they said, okay, strong woman, go ahead. My attitude was, if a woman came to me and said, I want to go to Tahrir Square, I'd say, not on my dime, you're not. You go do whatever you want on your own dime, but I'm not paying for you to get gang raped because that's what was happening in Tahrir Square. Should, should the, the question is, if let's, let's say there's a female journalist about to walk into Tahrir Square and you, Mark, are standing right behind her and she's got a camera and she's ready to go. Would you physically restrain her and stop her from going in? No. Or, or would you say, by all means, you can go do what you want. You're fierce and independent. Yeah. And then she walks in and gets gang raped. Free will. But men are supposed to protect women from these bad decisions. You're right. So what's happening in New York is their own fault. And there's going to be people who didn't vote for it, but they certainly choose to live there and live uh, under these policies that are voted in incessantly and overwhelmingly by the people of New York, not just women. So I laugh. I laugh. I say, OK, well, you know, you know what's going on there. You choose to live this way. It's It's been years of excessive and rampant skyrocketing crime and terror on the subways. And and I'm supposed to feel sympathy for the people. Look, if I watched a guy bungee uh, skydive, he's like, I'm going to I'm going to base jump. He's a base jumper. And then his shoot fails. Yes, I'm going to be like, oh, no. But I also understand he made those choices. I'm not going to I'm not going to be like, we should ban bungee jumping. We should ban base jumping. I'm going to be like, well, look, these people know the risk they take when they when they go. Imagine we ban skiing because people who go on mountains sometimes crash or fall into tree wells or something like that. No more skateboarding because you might get hurt and we don't want you to get hurt. and We got to decide for you to, to tell you what's nah. If they want to vote these policies in, they're more than happy to. And I will laugh when, when, when they get screwed up by it. A lady getting punched in the face is not her dying. The reason why I'm laughing is because they're going to get over it. One lady was even laughing at, with a lump on her head being like, well, well, they got me. Well, they didn't die in this situation. She falls backwards, hits her head. It's murder. So and, and the knockout game has has been serious. Yes, and they so keep voting for it. They they do as a majority, but that's the democratic system. We can't, that's why democracy doesn't and, always work. And we cannot invade New York to protect the minority who doesn't want to live that way when they choose to live there under the people who keep voting for these policies. So we're saying that's a no travel zone now. So like, rel now I'm I'm just playing devil's advocate here. But let's say that my daughter has a business meeting in New York. Does she same as bungee jumping? Okay, you know if you're gonna get if if you're gonna go uh, skydiving, you know there's a possibility your shoot fails and your reserve fails, and then you got to figure out how you're gonna survive this one. We don't ban skydiving, so if you're, I, I would say if your daughter is going to go to New York, you should sit down with her and say, take a look at these hot spots, take a look at the crime maps, take a look at what they're saying about the crime. Be ready, be prepared, understand the laws will stop you from protecting yourself. You're taking you're taking these risks. I think you'll likely be fine. Just know your risks. And That's I think it. it's worth mentioning that Tim's hypothetical in Tahir Square wasn't a hypothetical. It was speaking of talented journalist Lara Logan, I believe. No, not Lara Logan. Oh, wasn't? Okay. No. Never mind then. Nope. There was a she, Another... there was a Dutch journalist. Oh, okay. But was, okay. was she was Lara Logan gang Lara Logan was also assaulted in Egypt. It might just be a raped. trend there. Um, oh no, yeah. It was it was a common commonplace thing. It's very common, yeah. There. It's um, it's it's two thousand men screaming. Wow. The woman walks in and they grab her, rip her clothes off, and they're shoving their hands in her. I mean, there is a reason that you can Google best countries for solo female travelers, right? But I don't see those for men. I only see them for women. It's because women have to assess risk very differently than men. And I think you're right. There are women who will say, like, no, I can do whatever I want and live my dreams. And, like, I, I'm sorry. I, that's just not realistic. And I think, you know, whatever the solution is, it's up to women to be conscious of the dangers and risks that they're taking on. Men are more likely to be the victims of violent crime. But men, for obvious reasons, are more likely to be able to handle being a victim of violent crime. The issue of international conflict when it comes to men, and, and this was such a funny thing I had to deal with and when I did hostile environment training, because they make you do it for insurance purposes. Uh, what happens to a guy, uh, typically, when you engage in, when, when you find yourself involved, uh, peripherally, as a journalist or otherwise, in an international conflict? Uh, typically, you die. You might be kidnapped. You might die. If you're a woman... You are now a sex slave. This is the reality. And the, so the funny thing is, because of political correctness in this country, when they do the hostile environment training, they have to equally warn men and women of both being killed and being sex slaves. I assure you, while there are certain circumstances where men get raped, yes, 
overwhelmingly, they will just use you as a bargaining chip or kill you. And if you're a woman, you become property instantly. Wow. You are owned or they kill you. That's true. Like they'll, they'll, they might behead you or something, depending on where you are, what country you're in. But there are very, very different realities. If you're a man, you are more likely to get attacked. The reason why I think, uh, uh, as, as Hannah Claire mentions, they have websites for telling women what they can travel to is because not necessarily that they're more likely to be attacked, but that they're less capable of defending themselves. Yes. And they're more likely to be tortured and enslaved. So there's certainly take your precautions. But that being said, I think the other issue is that men are dumb. And I don't, I don't, I don't mean like on average men are stupid. It's, it's the, you know, the greater male variability, variability hypothesis shows that there's stupider men and smarter men, however you want to put it. What I mean is guys take risks that women don't take. So a guy might be like, I'll go to Pakistan. I'll be fine. And then they find themselves running from gunfire or something, you know, or I, crazy stuff happens out there. I got to tell you. Yeah. Well, and I think that the way that men and women naturally react to danger or threat is very different. Like I'm sure for men, it's like if someone were to come up and try and like take your wallet, right? Your, your reaction is like, I'm going to defend myself physically. But for women, maybe you, you want to defend yourself. You're probably thinking maybe that's why I carry pepper spray or something like that. Also, how do I get out of this situation as fast as possible? Because the likelihood is you can't handle your attacker. Okay. Like the risk analysis is just so different for men and women. It's important that we acknowledge that always. Like when these women are walking down the street in New York, even in broad daylight, they're, 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 experience is very different from men and it should be if they're being realistic and conscious right like if they are actually being careful about their safety they just analyze the situation differently than men because they have different advantages and different disadvantages let, let, let's talk about the macro uh, on average women vote democrat we look at the voter the voting pattern maps and you find that if you remove all men the country is solid blue all democrat they win every electoral vote if it is only men they men don't uh, the country would not be totally red I think there's two, there's, uh, I think Washington and like DC are still blue. Women overwhelmingly are the ones that are supporting Democrat policies. They're voting for us to go to war in Ukraine, inching us towards war with Russia and World War III, and they are not subject to the draft. I take serious issue with that, that there is an entire demographic of people, in fact, the majority voting for the possibility that well, I'm 38, so let's be real. Younger men will have to go and die for them. That's messed up. That shouldn't be. So I say the fastest way to resolve a lot of these issues is to we, we have to we have to move as, as, as heavily as possible towards either drafting women or abolishing the draft because you can't have second class citizens. You when when. Uh, so a lot of people say that we shouldn't have Election Day be a holiday. I believe uh, Election Day should be a holiday. There should be only one day. There should be no mail-in voting. Absentee should be extremely limited, and it should be to deployed soldiers and things like that. It should be in-person, one-day voting, and it should be a holiday. If it's not a holiday, it incentivizes the unemployed to vote, which creates a pressure system where the wants and needs of the unemployed outweigh those of the working uh, working class and, and, and people with families. We need to understand how that how these things w w will will put pressure on a system. If women on average know that even if World War III were to happen, they don't have to go fight, they're not going to be drafted, then it's very easy for them to vote for war. If we say that women have to be drafted alongside men, then they might actually vote against it and you might see a, a, a shift in their voting patterns. But if you, if you tell someone, you will not be subject, we're going to pass a law that says you can't jaywalk, but it only applies to guys named, uh, but, but anyone named Bill will not be, be held criminally accountable. Then a lot of guys named Bill are going to be like, yeah, who cares? Okay, pass the bill. I don't know. It doesn't affect me. That's what we need to avoid. And that's what we need to understand about how, vote, how voting works. The reason why I laugh at this stuff, these women don't think these things will affect them. And it's not just women. It's everyone in New York. I, unfortunately, there, there perhaps needs to be a lesson learned. But hey, look, it's democracy, right? Far be it for me to tell them how to vote. They voted this way. They got what they wanted. They're eating crow. And I laugh. Now they're mad at me for laughing. Wait, Tim, just to play devil's advocate, technically they just elected a former cop mayor, like in the most right wing option among the Democrats. Did they vote for this if they're electing a former cop who said he does want to increase yes. funding for police still? Yes. 
because you're, you're talking about a single election that just happened. And you're talking about a guy who is still a Democrat who has still advocated for much of the same policies, despite being a cop. And you're talking about the voting patterns of the past five, four years versus a single election that just happened recently. So, yes, elections have consequences and the voting patterns they engaged in, by all means, they may now be going, oh, heavens me, I can't believe this is happening. Let's change our voting patterns. They still voted in the people who made this happen. And let's be real. Eric Adams may be a former cop, but he is still a progressive and they are still pushing the same policies. I guess Lee Zeldin did come close in that last election in the governor's race, as close as a well, Republican fair, has. Fair, fair point, fair point. In a long time in New York. I, I think but we're seeing shifts. Too. Yeah. I do think we're seeing shifts. But again, like the Israel thing, right? You're seeing these shifts happen because of the divides in the different parties. But I don't see New York going red. I think he came let within let's, six. Or, let's, on, let's, 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 let's turn to some... Uh, um, Prominent New York women. I'm going to play this clip. Uh, the Raymond G. Stanley Jr. has got the clip for us. Uh, let's play this clip and we'll talk a bit about it. Do we need men? No. Do we need a man? No. Do we need men? No. Do women need men in this world? Uh, Do we need men? I don't know. I don't no. Know. Why? Because we can be strong independent women. There's this clip going viral online of a dozen women being asked the following question. Do we need men? <laughs> Most answered very quickly, no. <laughs> and only one said she thought women needed a man in their lives. Only one. So why do you think that is? Because men are useless. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> love it. And by the way, I want I to differentiate between straight men and gay men, because I think I, I would die without gay men. Or... I have Handy Manny at home. <laughs> <No>. he, <laughs> is, he fixes everything. When things go bump in the night, he's the one that goes downstairs. When there's a bug <clears throat> to be exterminated, he does the extermination. Nope. When there is something to be fixed, he fixes it. He throws out the trash Still and he no. throws out the recyclables. <laughs> I enjoy all the man stuff. So he my, does but that, my wait a second. <laughs> That's just, I know what you're going to say. But wait. She's really talking about a servant, let's face it. No. It's a handyman well, well, she's talking no, about. It's a handyman. Oh, it's a handyman with benefits. We do not have to. I need my man three to four times a week. And oh, <laughs> good for you guys. Broadly speaking, I feel like men have proven largely useless. Like I, uh, I, I, all in favor of sending the cast of The View into a sewer to deal with <laughs> rat kings and blockages? Uh, or how about to an oil refinery? How about to a gulag? I think that'd be a good place for them. Well, I mean, putting them in prison for having bad opinions. I'm saying well, I, I'm all fine. Th here's these, the these, these women uh, have lived such pampered lives and the voting patterns of many women reflect the sacrifices men have made for them while while shielding them, shielding not all women, certainly not all women, shielding many women from the harsh realities of conflict and crisis and heavy lifting and machinery and the injuries that come in the workplace, uh, especially with like the overwhelmingly male oil refinery job with a high rate of death. And they're shielded from it laughing, saying, we don't need men. I, I, I propose we give them what they've asked for for a small period so they can figure out, do they do they really need men or not? And Hannah, Claire, do women need men? Of course they do. I mean, this is what I find really interesting about these arguments is this is like, they think they're scoring points with the other young women in the room, right? They, they, they're doing this for clout amongst themselves. But in reality, like, at least two of them are married. They must have thought they needed a man in some form. And I think fundamentally, this is a really divisive conversation, right? It reminds me of the way the Democrats are like, we are such a divided country because of the Republicans. It's their fault. Like, it's the same logic here. Like, uh, women and men don't get along, but I'm just going to talk nasty about this one side, right? Like, if men were to walk around being like, men don't need women, they would either women would be like, you're gay, or they'd be like, how could you say that? We give <laughs> well, life. We do all these well, things. Like, this is, this I think men and women are meant to be in partnership. There's a reason they're complementary. And I think this is a really arrogant way to behave. I don't I, like it. I think it's I, gross. It, it, it's true. But let's let's be honest. Men have invented artificial wombs. So now the question is, do men men need women? Well, yeah, we can, I do. We can grow I think babies in a petri dish. This is this so much deeper than where we're going here, because this train of thought is the reason our society is where it's at right now. The feminist movement has killed society. Men need to be masculine. We need toxic masculinity. We need men to be fathers. You look at all the discrepancies with the inner city and violence. It all comes down to fathers. It all comes down to men. This thinking that we do not need strong men in society is what's killing our society. So that's why I said, send them to the gulags. Send them off. 
first of all, no man wants to go. And you know, no man's been down there in a while for any of those women. I mean, that's got to be nasty down there. <laughs> well, but I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really tired of hearing this. It's really just as a guy who literally my entire life is centered around me providing for and protecting my family. This is just, it, it, it upsets me to the core. It makes me, makes me want to violate terms of service on YouTube. <laughs> That's how it, much it Save it for me. the after show. Well, just I to have an <laughs> ounce of nuance here, I do think there is a good amount of selection bias going on here. I think this is like, you're out on the town, there, mm -hmm. some dude's shoving a phone in your face. Uh, do women need men? Like, well, I also and, you know, understand. Like, fair fair, fair like, point. Go you go to, because I also go to talk a more to people, conservative city and like, see how girls respond. Yeah, go to a different, They're also with yes. the way these women are dressed i'm not it just implies a setting which you but, know, but i don't care about the women. I, the view is the what view matters. is the problem these, but these girls are whatever the women also don't want to be seen saying on camera now it's like oh i need a man it kind of makes them look bad in a in a messed up right. psyche way it, that's part of the problem two mm -hmm. other women like that's the weirdest thing out of all of it is that they are looking to each other and being like well if i say that i admit if i admit that i need a man like i think they take issue with and, the with and the, and the they don't want to sound yeah. then they think that they sound weak and then they're therefore they're all going without, against feminism which is a corrupt so ideology can, can, anyway can, can i pull this up real quick this is uh Council member from NYC, Amanda uh, Farias, saying, where are the men calling this out in response to the women well, getting they don't punched need in the them, face? The Women's Caucus tweeted, we are deeply disturbed and concerned about widespread reports of attacks against women in New York City that have been confirmed by the NYPD. So where are the men calling this out? Oh, there's one. You arrested him. And look at look at these scumbags. This guy right here, scumbag. This guy right here, these Agreed. cops are yep. scumbags. Yep. Sorry. And we're, we're, we're tomorrow morning on the culture war. We got some cops on, and we're going to debate policing. But sorry, if I was a cop, and they said you're going to be transporting Daniel Penny, I say the hell I am. Hey Find Tim, somebody else. we're just following orders though. No, nope, no dice. Don't play that game. They're going to be like, well, you got to do it or you're fired. I'll be like, by all means, you go ahead and fire me. And then I'm going to go out there and I'm going to say I got fired because I refused to take part in the arrest of an innocent man who was trying to save lives in a city plagued by corruption and crime. But these cops got no problem. They got no problem justifying in their mind why they should be the one to hold this innocent man, this good Samaritan with cuffs behind his back, scumbags. And then they say, where are the men calling this out? You don't need men. You don't need them. You arrested them. That's how much they don't need them. Well, These women on The View say we don't need men. And it is to the point where politically they are arresting the men who are trying to protect them. There so are no protests get, for him, by the way. Nobody yeah, came no. out. You know, also, uh, a lot of people like to talk about. I mean, Ryan has a nice post here, but nobody's protesting for this guy. Um, His people were protesting did pretty well. People were protesting for the person who he killed, who was threatening, I believe, yep. other people. Um, Jordan, Jordan, Neely, Jordan Neely said that he would uh, something to the effect of wanting to kill people and he didn't care what would happen to him. There were protests for him, but nobody showed up to protest. Um, well, because arrested, so. I, I think I think you could go back to the fact that people who can't afford to take time of the day to protest, like think about the people who are supporting this guy. We generally have jobs. Yes. And I also don't want to get arrested. If I'm at a protest and somebody hits me, I'm going to hit them back. I'm going to be arrested. Sure. W weren't you just at a Kyle Rittenhouse thing? I was at a Kyle Rittenhouse protest yesterday at Western Kentucky University. I, I watched your video. They have no idea what they're talking about. They're, they're wrong about everything. They're claiming they, 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 they claim he killed black people and he's racist and stuff like that. It's all lies. It's all not true. He Many of them pedophiles. were saying specifically that he's like funded by the KKK. <laughs> I, yeah, that was crazy. Uh, which kind of doesn't make sense. And also there's... I do think it makes sense, though, that um, the right is the conspiracy. Well, side. that like BLM types are anti Rittenhouse, although he didn't kill any black people. The white people he killed were effectively pro BLM. Yeah. So in a sense, it it does make the sense. The logic but. is maybe they're it, pretty it, shaky. Yeah. So no, do you think weird. is it soft of me to say like a female version of Daniel Penny would be nice, like a girl to protect me? Why does a man always say like if the woman was armed, I could be the bait and then the woman gets. No, <laughs> I mean, he's, there, he lots, he's a he's handsome a trophy man. husband. No, so like, if you're a wealthy woman looking for a husband, this is a no, lot. And then, I mean, and like, you know, I could bait the person people are arguing with me and then she could light him up for me. That's real feminism. That's, that's, a, real that's a male ally. For feminism. Yeah. I don't want to carry the firearm. It would be hot for the hot, woman yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Hot, yeah. Do you think he has any? I think, I think Scarlett Johansson stuff. I think man. that if you look at divorce Absolutely rates and disavow. you look at the opinions of women, typically situations where uh, it's rare the situation where the man is in uh, the stay-at-home role mm. or the non-provider role like it doesn't tend to work and I think 
the, what the data shows is that guys feel insecure if they're not providing and women tend to feel unsatisfied if they're not if they're not receiving more. Would the, she not respect me if she was caring instead okay, of me? Okay, this is the thing. Is that, I think the protection thing is so interesting because when I was younger and like full of life and fearless, like I thought about it less when I was dating people. And now that I'm older, like I think it was like, I, I don't know, somewhere in my mid 20s, I was like, no, the ability to protect me and like their the steps that they actively take to defend themselves and the people they care about like this is a this is something i now think about a lot when when dating because it's an investment in my future my safety the safety of my property and the safety of my future children right like when i was younger i would have been like yeah maybe it'd be cool if she carried a gun but probably you're weak for not doing it but now i think of it as like mm, major ick. I, I, would not go for sorry i, I think, yeah, I think yeah, this this yeah. shifts into a macro problem where we as individuals, uh, uh, we say like an individual should have their rights. But what happens then, en masse, women, uh, maybe because they're off being pressured to say we don't need no man or something like that, or they genuinely believe it. Or maybe you have many women who are shielded from the harsh realities because men are doing the jobs like crawling around sewers. I'd, li I'd like to see what The View has to say if men were no just did not work for a month. I mean, look. They've how many episodes of like that Survivor show have they done? Not, I'm not talking about the show Survivor. They they did uh, a bunch of these shows where they got two islands and they put men on one and women on the other. And then what ends up happening is the women get lost, I'll start fight. crying, <laughs> and the men within like an hour have a bar set up and are sitting there sipping on coconuts and they have a fire going. And the women are there was one I watched that was so brutal. The women were like they're walking, they're trying to find uh, uh, supplies or whatever, and they get lost in the jungle and they walk in circles. And then once they once they loop back and hit one of their markers, they start breaking down and just start crying. Have you seen all these studies that came out recently about how the eight hour, like you needed hours of sleep was actually based on men and women actually need nine to 10 hours of sleep a night? Yeah. Like, yeah. we're different. We do different things for a reason. And it's great, I, but just I, different. I, different. I, 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 would, I would ask this of, of guys too. Like, you, you know, you're a married man. Yeah. In my experience, uh, it, I, I barely sleep, but my girlfriend sleeps more than I do. Oh, yeah. My wife outsleeps me. I'm like, how are you still asleep? Like, I've been up for like three hours. What are you doing? Women do need more sleep on average. She's absolutely correct. And this is another thing too. Uh, for a long time, I think up until the early 90s, painkillers were only tested on men. Mm -hmm. And so these doctors were like, man, these women are so weak. They're complaining. We gave them painkillers. And then they realized, oh, they don't work on women. No. And <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really interesting seeing how many, like there are a lot of, there's this really great book called... Um, uh, the female brain and it was written by a neurobiologist and she talks about the fact that like they used to just exclude women from studies because be like they mess up the data so crazy <laughs> but it's like actually their hormone cycle is completely different from men women go on a monthly hormone cycle that's uh, that men don't experience at all M men's hormones change with age and like, other stress and stuff like it, it's just so interesting that feminism is like no we don't need men but also we're actually completely different like we're 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 very, very different. Of course, you need men because they do a lot of stuff that you can't. Like, especially if you think about like the reason men and women pair up is because women have to bear children and you're in a much more vulnerable state. Like, it's good that we depend on each other. And I think this idea that like feminists have created, like, I don't need no man. The word need is such a trigger for them. They can't see it as like, hey, it is helpful to be in a partnership where you have people covering different bases so we can keep the species alive. Instead, they see it it's, as it's all about them and how they perceive themselves as weak if they admit they need help. It, it's interesting, though, because, you know, in the in the in the clip that we showed in the in the full video, they ask men, do men need women? The men say yes. Yeah. But a man saying they need women is is different. The guy, like, if you went to a guy and said, do you need a woman to survive? You, you could say, like, I guess emotionally, life would not be fulfilling without a woman. No, like, no, no, no. In terms of resources, materials, getting a job, do you need a woman? Well, no, no, I could, I could, I could figure it out. When, when, when asked to, when men are asked, do you need women? They're talking about life fulfillment and starting a family, the things they want to achieve and accomplish with their lives can't be done without a woman. I think the way the women are taking it is, do you need a man in terms of surviving? And they're like, no, I don't need a man. As opposed to, I, I think that they're, it's, it's, it's being viewed differently. Like w women internalize it as, I don't need a man to survive. Wh which in the wilderness, you, you would, a man would survive, would have a higher rate of survival than a woman on their own. But men are looking at it more emotionally and women are looking at it more materially. And I think some of the girls they interview on the street, like, I bet all of them are really salty at some guy who has not texted them back. You know what I mean? Like, it is fair to say that, like, women will assume more masculine responsibilities if they feel like there are not men in their lives they can depend on, right? So if you have a bad experience with men, and I think you've talked about this a little bit, like, 
when there are not strong male leaders and there aren't fathers and you're having like all these terrible romantic relationships, like of course women become bitter and are like, I don't even want to deal with you guys. Oh. On the other hand, like let's no. let's not fool ourselves. Men and women need each other and that's good. What's crazy is the way they're dressed looks like they're really trying to attract a man. Yeah. Like that's the whole funny part of this. Like no. you're not wearing that for you. They're wearing it for other women. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. Like makeup, plastic surgery. So like I'm not going to single any woman out, but there's a lot of photo videos and photos of women that they have lip fillers. Oh, I'm getting nervous in the room. <laughs> I'm not talking about you. Don't I'm have kidding. lip fillers. No, I don't have lip fillers. But there, there, there was this one woman who posted a TikTok, and she was like, "How come everybody is saying that I look like I'm 45? I'm 26." And they were like, "Oh, because of all the plastic surgery you got, you look like someone who's desperately trying to look 26, like a 45 year old woman or a 50 year old woman." She's like, "Oh my god, no guy." Like rarely, rare guys, because because there are certainly guys who like a lot of different things. Some guys like morbidly obese chicks. Some guys like skinny chicks. Whatever. Certainly, some guys like the crazy plastic surgery. Most guys don't like it at all. Can you just I, imagine the guy who's like, yeah, you know, I'd hit it, but man, her eyebrows aren't long enough, and her lips no, aren't like, puffy <laughs> enough. You guys might need to ask Jeff Bezos. Um, being some guys like it, that's fine. But my point is, <laughs> on average, when you go out and you're talking to guys, guys are just yeah. like. You're like regular looking women are fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this is actually true in the data. When uh, the data, I believe it was OkCupid put out their their data on who men message. Or it might've been Tinder. Women only go for the top 80% of men and men have a standard bell curve where like if a guy sends 10 messages, two go to low, two go to high, you know, one to the third, oh. one to the seventh. And then on, they, on, they send most of their messages to average looking women. It's a standard bell curve. So guys are kind of just like, don't need none of that. So then why are women getting surgery and doing all this makeup for other women? Wow. I think that is a part of it. I think, well, first off, I would hate to be a man. You guys are great. What? But like the idea of having but to- But we have like, so much agency. You, that's the thing. I don't know that <laughs> I, I feel like that. I could do anything in the world. But like you also have to like agency. hit on women and ask them out. And like- oh, I, But I, I love having that you, choice like, and opportunity. That's what? cool for the, you. No thing. Like not. Oh, dude. Like, I, I don't want. That, like there are just a things woman's that, like, Tinder men versus have a man's do. Tinder. Mm -mm, it's none for me. A, a, a woman on Tinder goes it. She doesn't like w women. Don't need to swipe. Like, well, I guess you do. All, all women have to do is swipe on every single guy, and then wait a day, and then go into their inbox and scroll through all the men who have messaged them and say he looks good. Men have to swipe on every single woman, then send messages to as many as they can and get one response back. Like, that's so much worse. You guys have it right. rough. That's, that's why, awful. That's why Bumble got invented. Because they were like, this way men won't harass women, but women would have to initiate with men. So men aren't the ones constantly mm -hmm. chasing after. Because I think the view was like with Tinder, guys stopped using Tinder legitimately. It's supposed to be, you look good, I'll swipe on you. You look bad, I'll swipe off on you. You look good, I'll swipe on you. Not you, I'll swipe left. And then what happens is guys eventually were like, it's too much work. And so they swipe right on every single woman. So <laughs> Tinder had to put a limit on how many women you can swipe right on. So guys are trying to just be like, I will take a message from any woman. <laughs> and women were like, I get too many messages from guys. So that's like the duality of the dating scene for mm -hmm. men and women. I also think men feel pressures that like women take for granted that they feel, right? Like a lot of men feel the pressure to be the provider for the family, right? And women kind of get the out of being like, well, maybe you can stay at home or you can do whatever. Not that that isn't hard work, like there's a sacrifice there too, but like that must be really difficult to navigate in your 20s and 30s as a young man being like, well, if I want to have a family, like I have to be ambitious. I have to push myself. I have to do this, that, and the other. I need to say like, there are things that I think women take for granted that men who are trying, not all men, like there are awful guys who send you creepy messages or whatever, but like a lot of men who want to have strong families or to be, you know, a quote unquote good man, they have a lot of pressure that women just are like, yeah, but that's their job. It is very wanna... stressful. It is very stressful when you're presented with the idea of family as a man, as a traditional man. Cause you're not just, if you mess up, you're not just messing up yourself. Your, your whole family doesn't need, it's kind of like owning a business, Tim. Like if you mess up, people don't, don't pay their mortgage. Yep. It's much different than losing a job. If Tim has a bad day at work, you might have to let people go. Yeah, Same with I, me. I, 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 well, I'll tell you what really frustrates me. We, we tell people you have unlimited sick time. And if you are sick or think you might be sick, do not come to work. And then they come anyway. <laughs> and then I have to tell them, if I do not work, you do not have a job. Please do not come to work sick because I don't want to get sick. 
And there are people who are like, no, 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 I have to come. I can't do that. I can't stay home. I'm like, just stay home. I will give you more money not to come into work, please. <laughs> we'll pay you to stay home when you're sick. Really uh, interesting. That's right. <laughs> uh, work from home if you can. Uh, I, I want to read one super chat before we jump into super chats because ne Neglectful Sausage says, wearing it for other women is a coat. They are still competing to be the most attractive because most attractive gets the best man. Yes, but the standard of what is beautiful is based on other women. That's my point. They're obviously trying to be the most beautiful, but who determines beauty? Guys, notoriously, will hook up with anything. <laughs> so the women are competing with each other to appear more beautiful to each other. And then you end up with women getting weird plastic surgery in their 20s and guys being like, oh, that's kind of weird. Like no man ha came up with the idea of eyebrow lamination. I bet none of you even yeah. know what that well, is. I don't know what this. is that? Or, yeah, or lip fillers? I can tell you. Like the ubiquity of Botox and lip fillers is very unfortunate. Every oh, and buckle fat removal does. is so disgusting. And that's the what, only what, thing that we removal? noticed too. Buckle fat um, removal. Yes, there are these sir. photos of all these female celebrities in their 20s who have gotten the, the fat in their cheeks removed. What? So oh, their yeah. cheeks are sunken in, uh. and it's disgusting. It is it is disgusting. They look like skulls, and there's posts. And I tell you, I'm willing to bet the majority of guys agree with this, but they keep doing it anyway. Because you look at all the posts, that woman, um, Erin, what's her face? Moriarty, was that her name? I think the actress. She, 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 the actress who got roasted because she got her contours done, she said, <laughs> and it made her cheeks look sunken in, oh. and everyone started... And, and it looks like she got plastic surgery, whether she did, I don't know, whatever. It looks like she did. And then she actually deleted her social media for a while because all of these guys were like, you're disgusting. So there are these posts all over Instagram showing the before and after of plastic surgery, and guys are insulting these women who looked good and then got surgery and now look weird. And they're like, you're gross, you're disgusting, what's wrong? And it's unfortunate, a lot of guys are like, that what, what is happening to young women is so is so disappointing. It's so worrisome. Why are they doing all of this? They don't look good, but it's because their standard is based on each other. So if a celebrity high-profile woman with a million followers does it, the other women are trying to compete with her and be on her level. And guys are sitting back being like, none of that looks good. But they keep doing it. All right, we're going to go to Super Chat. So if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button? Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. Head over to TimCast.com. Click join us to become a member so you can hang out for the members only uncensored show coming up at 10 p.m. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be not so family friendly, but quite a bit fun. And, uh, uh, It'll be, it'll be a good time. We're going to take callers from our members. So if you're a member and you want to get that call in, uh, get in that Discord server. Smash that like button. Let's read what you got to say. Oh, whoa, really? No Clint? T-Bomb85 says, howdy, poople. No, no Clint. Clint normally has the uh, first one. Clint, uh, are you okay? Too bad. Alpha Turkey says, really? A Lizzo fundraiser versus wake of an officer. It's quite incredible if you ask me. But he also can't go to the wake because then he would be acknowledging that there is something wrong in New York and that progressive policies. He still failed. didn't go to that bridge um, outside of D.C. and Maryland yeah. either. I think he. they said that I'll he didn't go, go to East Palestine. Harvard. I mean, like he's not going anywhere. He doesn't want to go. He it's wants to be right partying there. with Lizzo. It's an hour out from the White House, probably. Yeah, but he's sleeping. Um, they have him sleep he has 20 to go hours to Delaware on the yeah. weekends. He's very busy. No, whatever he's drugs he's trip. On, dude. No, they they, they no, got him in like a bridge. hyperbaric oxygen chamber all day sleeping. Oh my god! And then they they pump him full of just like crazy uppers mm -hmm. and fluids so they can operate at that level for about an hour. You know there Let's, are allegations against Lizzo too, so I'm surprised they brought her. Allegations? Anyway, yeah. yeah. What are the she allegations? Like mistreated her dancers and subjected oh, right, them to like right, right. sexual stuff. So I guess that's hey. Yeah. Believe all women. All right. <laughs> Koenashi says, why aren't you coming to Louder Than Life, Phil? Phil's not here. Phil's not here, Phil's man. Phil's busy <laughs> running for Congress in you New Hampshire. Like Mark, no worries. You look like I, Phil I, a little bit. You sound like lot. him. We have a lot in common. Your yeah. voice. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Have you tried being a singer before? Um, Is that what he is? Rock I, that might be the next thing for me. Yeah. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Tim, you go from liberal to fence sitter to right winger to conservative to online troll. You're at the top, bro. There's nothing left to call you. I know. I, I've, I've, I've gotten it all. Mediaite called me an online troll because so so it's, <laughs> it's official political. It's a, it's a combination of ignorance, but also masterful deflection. John Stewart said. Letitia James knew Trump effectively, uh, I'm paraphrasing, committed fraud. Because when it came time to pay taxes, Trump undervalued those same properties. My response was, you don't set the property value of your properties. The state does. So I tweeted, did Jon Stewart commit fraud when he did this? 
it was evaluated, uh, a, a value, uh, a valued at 1.8 million, and he only paid tax, and he sold it for 17.5 million, and only paid tax on 748 thousand. So my point was based on his quote. What the left then did was conflate my point about John Stewart's quote being wrong into I literally accused John Stewart of committing fraud, and then they can debunk that John Stewart committed fraud, which was not the point I was making. I was debunking John Stewart's false assertion that Trump committed fraud because he paid lower taxes. But that's how they deflect. That's how they, they, they get away with lying. Hopefully on Monday, John Stewart has a fake segment where he lies about the criticism. But uh, good luck, sir. I wish you the best. All right, let's grab some more. Big 7588 says record fundraising event at Epstein Island reuni re reunion event. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Federale Actual says, as if John Stewart cucks calling Tim an internet troll for being right wasn't enough, he's got to go and have a based AF take on the knockout game version 2.0. Speak on it. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was just funny. There were conservatives like being like, how dare you laugh at this, Tim, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah. look, man. I could I could certainly do a grift where I'm like strong men must protect women. Yes, and conservatives give me money. No, I left. Like people are like I tweeted, I literally tweeted, I find it funny that women are getting punched in the face in New York City. That was the tweet. And then people were like he's engagement baiting, he's trolling, and I'm like I'm not trolling. I am not engagement baiting. I was sitting here on this room in this room and I clicked play on the video, and I laughed. <laughs> and that was it. And then I typed out, I find it funny. And that's literally what my experience was. And of course, I can explain it in greater detail, but I instantly laughed. I'm like, you reap what you say. It's, it's, it's not, some people are like, it's schadenfreude. I'm like, it's not really schadenfreude. I'm not glad they're living this way. It's just funny. It's just like, it's, it's ironic. Like, they're, like these women complaining. It's like, I chose to live this way, and now I have to live this way. And I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> Why am I mad? I don't live there. I got out of that place. Now, if someone came to West Virginia and did that, they're going to have some trouble. But, you know, that's a different story. You live in New York and you want to live in New York. That's fine. We here in West Virginia, we take very seriously. So, uh, for instance, Jefferson County banned uh, drag shows with kids. That's where that's where we, we, we want to. We, we're, we're operating out of West Virginia. They have constitutional carry. So the women in my life, they can have a whole variety of guns on them. They can have 12 they can carry three AR-15s, a Barrett M82, and four different, a variety of pistols all over them. If they want to carry that much weight, they can. That's West Virginia. And you know what happened? If you were walking down the street in West Virginia with a Barrett M82 slung over your shoulder, and that thing weighs a good amount. What does that thing weigh? Like, I don't know, 40 pounds or something? I don't know. People are going to be like, sick. If you, if, if you did that in New York, everyone would be screaming and running in random directions. If you were to walk through New York with an AR-15... Just like not 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 at low ready, but like slung, like o over your shoulder or whatever, like o around your neck, people would be screaming and calling the police. You do that in West Virginia, a guys gonna walk up and be like, "Oh, what do you got there? Is that what what, what, what do you what do you got? What are you operating with?" And then he's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, back home, I'm a big, you know, I got this, that, I got this." They'll just they'll talk to you, or they, they won't even say anything. Mm -hmm. I saw a guy walking down the street with a crossbow and and a and a like a satchel of bolts. To say nothing, I don't know. I'm like, hey, he's probably going to target practice or something. I don't know. Like, I'm not worried about it. And if the guy were to take it, load it up and start aiming it, then I'd be like, okay, but that, I feel I look, that, that doesn't happen. Let's grab some more super chats. Craig Charlton, sa uh, Charlton? Carlton says, what's the deal with Operation Steadfast Defense with NATO doing an exercise? No idea. Not sure what that is. Steadfast Defense. Not sure. Hard K says, how many dudes did Diddy Diddle of Diddy Did Diddle Dudes? <laughs> dude did diddy work. is such oh goodness there's 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 so much to to to, to do with the diddy thing and just more and more stuff is coming out like you saw usher made some remarks or someone else who's like 50 cents going in bro like there's all kind of hilarious. stuff oh man diddy did it but it, he didn't do as much as you think he did he did a whole lot worse there, there's there's a good opportunity there for some you know how many dudes did did how many dudes did did diddy diddle if did or is it how many how many dudes could Diddy Diddle if Diddy could Diddle Dudes? <laughs> you no, know, I, I like you to Did Diddle Dudes. How many dudes did Diddy Diddle if Diddle Diddy? He <laughs> got me. How many dudes did Diddy Diddle if Diddy Did Diddle Dudes? Yeah, I got it. There we go. All right. Anyway, the Diddler. Where are we at? Where are we at? 
The dude abide says news. The Illinois Sheriff's Association and 29 attorneys have filed amicus briefs to SCOTUS, telling them they need to take up the Illinois assault weapons ban case, stating the Seventh Circuit is illogical. Here, here. They want to take your guns, but they're not going to be able to. We've been winning constitutional carry across the board. It's been great. We'll grab some more. Tim Brackett says, get in shape and vote 2024. I got to tell you, you know, right now, you may be sitting there and people often ask, you, say, Tim, what can I do? There's a lot of things you can do. Follow Scott Pressler. That dude is a master of voter registration. And also he, he did some big city cleanups. Those are cool too. So a uh, uh, fan of his efforts to register voters. He's actually responsible for flipping some states. I think Florida went um, more rep registered Republicans and Democrats thanks to the work of Scott Pressler and those working with him. But I also want to just stress, it is not hard to do exercise and get in shape. It is seriously not hard. Half an hour, a couple times a week. Just basic, basic exercise, even if just starting going walking, if you haven't already. I, I was saying before I recommend MyFitnessPal because it has exercises in it and it can track your, your macros. That means your carbs, your fat, and your protein. And you can actually set it. Hey, I want to uh, weigh this much. I'm this tall. This is how much I weigh. Here's what I want to weigh. You can actually you put in how much activity you want to do. And, you, and it has exercises put in already. It does cost money. But it's not hard. It seriously isn't. So uh, I, I, I recommend, man, if there's anything any of you can do, it's by November, show off your before and after picks. And um, my attitude was, if I'm going to say we should be strong and responsible, then I should do literally everything in my power to be at 110%. And the one thing I'm not doing is lifting. I do exercise. I do eat. I, I eat decently well. Now I'm eating better. Now I'm exercising way more and I'm lifting because my upper body was totally neglected. Skateboarding, great. I got great legs. They're they're strong. Been strong for twenty years, but I I I, I can't lift, and that's a mistake. You 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 have to. You, it's not well rounded. So I'm like I'm slacking. What am I doing? What what am I doing? I I I finish exercising, then I put on the five and I eat some food. No 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 no. We're we're gonna throw in a half an hour to an hour of lifting three times a week, because you can do it. You can do it. We're minute gonna... for minute, probably the best use of your time. Oh, lifting is life. Yeah, I, I know I'm kind of cliche, <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it just changes everything. And also, when you look at the health benefits, it it actually strength is more of a predicator of morbidity risk. So mm. your grip strength yes. is more of a predicator of morbidity risk, which is the risk of dying. Yep. Than cardiovascular. And mm. uh, if I think the mistake people often make is they say like, you know, you got to get in shape, you got to start lifting. I started lifting. And it's euphoric. It it feels good. It's, it's like it's like the runner's high. You ever get a runner's high? I don't. I've run. got I've got <laughs> I've gotten that from riding a bike when I would ride to work over the Williamsburg Bridge. So I would I was riding like seven miles plus up and over the bridge. And by the time I got to the top of the bridge, it was runner's high. It was like I wanted to punch a bear in the face. Yeah. I, just, I, I just can't function without lifting. Lifting's life. I just love it. It feels so good afterwards. It's like I feel like I could punch a bear in the face. Like I, I walk out of that workout Powerful. room and I'm like, I just want to find a bear right now. And just roar. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. I, I wouldn't advise that. Yeah, that might not work out well. <laughs> I'm kidding though. But like, you feel great. You feel right. like a million, like lightning surging through you. So I, I recommend it, man. Get in shape because, uh, hey, look, you know, we're going to be successful. We're going to win a culture war and we're going to be the envy of lesser men. And women. Lifting weights is white supremacy, though. Just remember that. <laughs> it's the gateway, they say. And bring out the white supremacist in yourself. Let's go. We'll grab some more. What is this? Uh, J. Willie. Is that what it says? It says, would you consider getting Dr. Mike Israetel on the culture war to go in depth about fitness and hypertrophy training? I could Maybe. Him. He's a friend of mine. Oh. oh, is he? Did I say his name right? Israetel. Israetel. Yep. Um... I definitely think it would be good to do a culture war on fitness, the debate around fitness. I think it was NBC that said working out is the gateway to becoming far right or whatever. Of course. And so, <laughs> like they desperately want you to be fat and unhappy. Yep. Do not listen to them. If the left says don't work out and don't think critically, you must work out and think critically. Freedom and independence. All right. Lurch says Mark looks like a swole Pasobic. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's, that's a very nice compliment. I like it. Let's go. We'll grab some more super chats. Where are we at? The emperor's champion says most people are not leaders and just follow orders. So if you put good leadership in charge, cops will more likely do the right thing. I agree with that. I do. 
But we're going to have a debate tomorrow, 10 a.m. on the Tenet Media YouTube channel. Uh, Phil will be joining. And then we have two current police officers. Where, what, uh, you, I think you said one's an NYPD officer? Is... No, no, no. I don't, oh. I, I don't, I don't think they're NYPD. Okay. Do you know where, uh, where they're cops? Uh, I'm assuming one's Philly. Which oh, will be real interesting because yeah. he's gonna we're gonna be like crime is bad and he's gonna be like oh you're telling me <laughs> <laughs> Philly, but uh, but we'll see. I think I think we'll probably agree on eighty percent of things, and I think uh, the general idea with these cops is they're probably gonna agree. You know, there's a lot of people who don't like when I'm critical of of policing as a system in the way I am, but I have a feeling these cops are gonna actually agree a lot, and they're gonna be like we have these problems we need to fix because. You know, I've been saying this since 2020 with the whole abolish the police thing. I think the institution of police is good. I think cities should have police. I think the problem is we have corrupt cities. We have corrupt government. We have ignorant voter bases and we have to reform our culture. I've also said if everyone in, the, in this country was as devout as Seamus Coughlin of Freedom Tunes, you would not need police because of the shared morality. Yeah. But when you have... As you become more and more multicultural, morals are few and far between. Some groups are very strongly moral and some are amoral. Then you need police to basically, I don't, say, I don't, I don't think you necessarily need in every circumstance, but it's good to have arbiters to help maintain order and peace. But if your police are in alignment with your community, then you're going to have good cops and you're not going to have very many problems. When you have what we have in New York City, which is a multicultural democracy with cops who don't live anywhere near the community and are just doing a job, you get things like Daniel Petty getting arrested. They don't know. They don't care. But, you know, say let me we'll grab some more Super Chats. Tuesday's child said Michelle had 2016 and 2020 to run, but didn't. I don't I, I, I don't think she likes being called a man. I, I seriously. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there there must be nothing more insulting than being a middle-aged woman who is being accused by millions of people of being a man and they're posting screenshots of your crotch and like from all these different shows you've ever been on, like that's merciless, you know? I think a lot of guys wouldn't care so much. They'd just be like, well, you know. Exit man, uh, X Tin Man says, the only thing worse than calling a woman a man is asking a fat girl if she's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I think manly women, manly looking women get less leeway nowadays because of tr more trans women being a thing. Mm. Did that sound sound? What do you mean by leeway? Well, like, like if there's a manly looking woman now, back in the day, you might have given them more benefit of, of the doubt. But now if there's a manly looking woman, you're like, well, that might actually be a trans. man. We really yeah. don't know anymore. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the other thing, too. It's like, uh, we were. what were we talking about the other day? You've got p women say, Lizzo is beautiful. And then if you say, <laughs> you look like Lizzo, they get offended and they cry. <laughs> like, if you told a woman, like, if you ask a woman if she likes Dylan Mulvaney, she says, yes. Do you think Dylan Mulvaney is beautiful? She says, yes. Be like, because you kind of look like Dylan. She would be very, very upset. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know. Who's prettier, Dylan Mulvaney or Lizzo? Lizzo. Lizzo. Well, I'm going to go with the one with the proper plumbing. <laughs> There's a lot of plumbing there. Well, a lot it's, of plumbing. Like, is a clown attractive? You know what I mean? Like, Dylan Mulvaney. I, I, hippopotamus Dil isn't, but like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No, neither are. It's two bad choices. That's that's the uh, hippopotamus. That's why it's a good question. Because it's oh goodness. Let's uh, let's let's let's. Let's just. That was we'll, elementary. We'll just, you guys like that. Let's one let's much. get ready that for that members good. only show where good. we can really like. I got so much I want to say, but I'm like, I, I, I'm gonna wait. We're that gonna we're so, gonna wait. Oh go to God. timcast.com. Click join us. Become a member because you can tell where this is gonna go. But uh, let's read some more super chats. <laughs> I, I can't respond. I want to. I will respond later. Yeah. All right. Insert clever name here. Says listening from the gym right now. Got to get jacked for the get your drinks ready. Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually quite simple. Your chance of survival is substantially increased if you're in shape. Yes. It's not about whether it was civil war or anything like that. It's if you want to succeed, being in shape helps you succeed. That's it. You'll have more energy. You'll be more alert. You'll be more focused. All of that. So uh, let's win. Let's win, baby. You want to win a culture war? Get in shape. And you could do a little bit, man. It's not even that. It's a, you add a little bit. Here's, here's the big thing. The macro tracking, even if you're not exercising, do you, 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 do you have like an app or you do all this stuff? Um, yeah, I, I generally go by, I know what I'm eating. I have meals, but yeah, I, generally speaking, you my could, clients macro track. You could easily do it in your head too. Um, I recommend getting an app. 
Yeah. Most people suck at it and you're going to sneak stuff in there. It you're going to have snacks. The, the, the macro tracking really helped me figure yes. out my diet properly because for a long time skating, I'm like, I didn't know what I needed more of or less of. And so I was like, I don't know. Should I have another protein chick? Like, what do I do? So now with the, with the app, we have daily goals. I know if I'm in deficit, if I'm up or, or, or below. And then the fitness app actually has two settings. You can actually set it to where if you, my fitness pal, if you exercise, it will actually alter your daily macros and increase them for what you used. So if you say, here's how tall I am, here's how much I want to weigh. And then I have the Garmin Phoenix Pro watch, which whenever I exercise, I turn on. It then sends the data to the app. The app then says, hey, you burned 1300 calories in that workout. You need to add this much more protein for the day, this much more carbs, this much more fat. It's awesome. Yeah. So uh, the combination of the two is good. But I think my point is, if the only thing you did was track your macros, you'd probably get fit. You 100% would. Just knowing what you're eating, you'll be more cognizant of what you Because a lot of people just snack. Yep. Like people put down thousands of calories just munching. They don't. Just they don't nibbling. Get, the no cra- idea. The, the crazy thing is the fat. I didn't realize. So I was doing a keto. I was doing basically keto for a long time. And I felt like I wasn't eating that much. But actually, the amount of fat that I was getting was massive fat calories. That adds up. Crazy. So like, was like a tablespoon of butter is a hundred calories. Amazing. I, I can do, I can do four tablespoons of jelly and, <laughs> and get a hundred calories. Yep. So when I, what I'm doing for breakfast now is I'm doing a, a, a mochi. Super easy. You take uh, a, a, a serving of white rice flour, a serving of milk, stir it up, put it in the microwave and it turns into effectively a bland pancake. But then I put butter and jam on it and it's so good. If you guys have had mochi before, right? Mm-hmm. Mochi is awesome. And then that gets me like, that's my basic breakfast, but you get your carbs, you get your fat. And then from that, I realized like the butter you put on toast, that'll get you. Oh yeah. Crazy. It's the of toppings. Course. Look at yeah. look at, like salad. You put dressing on that thing. It's more caloric than a Big Mac. You douse your salad in ranch. Yeah. yeah it's going to be more calories. So, than but that's we, the good stuff though. People man. love doing that. They'll we, order salad, the douse stuff. it in ranch. We do sushi on Fridays. And like after we wrap up the culture war, everybody, you know, comes and we have sushi. It's like a company thing. And while I was waiting for it, I pulled out this Southwest ranch dip that we have. And it's like veggie dip. And I'm like, I'll do a couple pieces of salami and some and some dip. Right. Probably not even that much food. Like what? Four pieces of salami dipped in the ranch. It was like 600 calories. Mm -hmm. The fat in the salami, the fat in the dip was insane. I was like, I was at like 50 grams of fat already. And I'm like, that's what people don't realize. And now, now I understand why there are products that say low fat, because that fat sneaks up on you. Yeah. And that, that's where I get in arguments with keto people. I'm a calories in, calories out kind of guy. I've always been get adequate protein, get adequate fat, fill in the rest of carbohydrate. But the people who have gotten results from keto, they are so into it. They will fight you. They, I, will, I, they will fight you over it. I lost 30 pounds when I started keto. You're out, you're eliminating entire macronutrient. You're, you're yeah. taking away carbs. You're taking away all the yummy stuff, all the chips, all the <laughs> good stuff, right? So you're stuck eating butter and pork rinds. I actually, so for me, I'm, I, I was down to like 40 carbs a day, but I actually wasn't getting a lot of protein either. I was probably getting like 50. I was mostly fat. Oh my God. Yeah. Almost no protein because I, I had no idea. I was, uh, uh, I was, I was doing like, I would have like steak and chicken. And then I would have avocados, I would have sour cream, I would have just really, really high fat stuff, dips. And then I started adding protein when I realized I wasn't getting enough. I started doing casein at night. And then I figured out like, and then I figured I should probably just get a personal trainer to tell me what to do. And I did. And now he gave me the app and he says, eat this. And I said, I'll eat whatever you tell me. Because if you tell me to do something and I have bad results, I stop doing it. So let me like, let, let me do it. And I've never felt better. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, never and it's better. empowering. Like you're in charge of it. If you mess up, it's on you. It's to be, your accountability. To be fair, I gotta be honest. I, I did felt feel good cutting the carbs in the first place. I think the issue was several years ago. If I had balanced what I was eating in the first place, that would have probably set me on the right track. By eliminating most of the carbs, it dramatically reduced a lot of the caloric intake, yep. which benefited me greatly but I would have benefited more by just doing a standard macro tracking with a trainer. Yeah, absolutely. But keto does serve its purpose. It's easy, it's brainless. Like, hey, don't eat carbs, cool. You cut out 33% of your available macros because you got protein, carbs, and fat. 
So you're naturally going to eat less. Yep. And it takes away the good snacking foods. Like they're snacking on pork rinds. Who the hell eats pork rinds? We, like, we, we just had packs and packs of salami. Salami. It's, it's so good. Like the good. Italian that is so stuff. Chicago of you, dude. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> that is so Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll grab a couple more. Let's see what, uh, what super chats we have. A couple more on the way out. Ryan Hudson says on the bench for Democrats, do not overlook Cory Booker. Also, please make a shirt that has HCB's monogram. And I hate it here. P.S. Get Dr. Phil on the show would be an awesome, uh, would be an awesome show. Cory Booker, Annie. senator from New Jersey. I feel like I haven't heard a peep out of him right. ever since he ran um, in the past uh, primary. Yeah. Dr. Phil would be great for culture war. Yeah, let's 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 see if we could, because I'd love to talk to him about the border stuff. Yeah, like, cool. have, take the lead on that border stuff. Tell me, man, you're, you're the guy who talked to this. You know, what's up? Uh, all right, Leon Yoder says, the only reason I question Cassandra posting such opinionated positions on Israel is because she is editor-in-chief of Timcast News, and IMO News should at least appear neutral as much as possible. She blocked me on X for pushing back on her Israel positions, LOL. I assure you, my friend, uh, I have I have met no more an honorable person than Cassandra when it comes to news. She quite literally, quite literally will say, I can't do this story. I'm too biased. Someone else do it. So like, She's totally aware of that. And I, I tremendously respect that. That's why I think she does a good job. There's a, there are stories on monkeys or whatever. She'll be like, I can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, nope. There's a, funny there's a funny story out of Thailand where monkeys have taken over. And Cassandra was like, the monkeys have done nothing wrong. It's the people's fault. There was an, uh, some, I can't remember who it was. I should look it up when I first, because when, when we started back in the day, it was like just me and Cassandra for a little while. And there was, someone had died and some like, you know, former was secretary it, of state. I can't remember who was it, it was. It wasn't me. Not, not, it no, would have been McKinley 2021 ago, yeah. at that point. And because that's when I started working here. And like, she messaged me and was like, hey, I hate this person. So I can't write the <laughs> Like, it won't be fair. Can you do this? And I was like, sure. Okay. Sounds good. But, yeah, I see. You know, I just, think it's valuable that I think it's one of the Timcast media strength that we have a diversity of political thought here. I think a lot of people talk about wanting a diversity of political thought, but don't actually engage in it. And I'd like to say I'm proud to work at a company that has it. Well, not, not just that, but I mean, you consider yourself pro-Israel. Yeah. And Cassandra recommended you. She yep. was like, Elad does a really, really great job. And you guys are ideologically on the other ends of the of that, of that issue. I think uh, it's scnr.com. Uh, uh, I think I think we have that, that good balance, which leads to everyone just being met all the time. Uh, but that being said, we're going to go to the members only show and be not so family friendly. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Head over to TimCast.com, click join us to become a member and watch that uncensored show where we say naughty things. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. Mark, do you want to shout anything out? Um, yeah, you can follow me on uh, Twitter, X, whatever it's called, at Mark Lobliner, Instagram at Mark Lobliner. YouTube is YouTube.com slash Tiger Fitness. Um, yeah. That's uh, my company's. If you have any nutritional supplement needs, tigerfitness.com. And you can find Ambrosia Planta, which is the number one plant-based protein in the country, at Sprouts and the Vitamin Shop. That's cool. It's been fun having you here. It's been great. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Appreciate it. Hopefully you'll be back soon. Uh, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for scnr.com. That's Scanner News. I'm really grateful to be a part of that team. Uh, it's a fun place to work. Uh, you can follow our work at Timcast News on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow me personally on Instagram at hannahclaire.b and on Twitter at hcbrimlow. Thank you so much. Hi, Alad. Hey, um, Alad Eliyahu, um, field reporter here at Scanner News. Hannah Claire already said it, but you could follow our work at Timcast News on Instagram and Twitter. There's a lot of great stuff there. Come hang out with us in the after show. Serge, what's let's, up? Let's just debate Israel in the after show. I feel like everybody here loves Israel so much. What's Sounds there good. to debate? <laughs> what's Mark? your handle? Wait, you're on Twitter too, I'm right? A lot at Alad Eliyahu, but Timcast, the Timcast News Twitter is where you can find a lot of our great reporting. Oh, yeah, and I am Surge.com. Thanks for coming, a lot. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, see you guys in the after show. Become a member. Cheers. We'll see you all over at TimCast.com in about a minute. Thanks for hanging out.